Hello, my name is Saltbot. I am Kismet's co-host for this evening. Welcome to Kismet's stream and thank you for dropping by once again. Tonight it's time to get back to PC gaming with the Kismet overburdened with love PC. Thanks to all of you we can take this stream to another level. Let me open up the vault door and let's go inside. Kismet is waiting for us. Hello everybody, I'm behind the Tesla again, ready to drive drive this. Oh, it's got a tiny steering wheel. Uh, drive this sucker to Mars, that's right. We're going to play some more games. Uh, there's no guarantee that I won't just like completely cough through this entire uh, stream, just to let you guys know. Uh, I still have a really, really bad cough. I am finally over the major part of my flu, uh, which is uh, the fever and the cold sweats and the feeling really weak. I've literally been in bed nonstop for the last two weeks, uh, just laying there, bored out of my mind. I have played zero games uh, since then, uh, and uh, I'm ready to play some games with you guys. So I would go ahead and say hello to some peeps here. And again, <clears throat> if I go into a coughing fit, I uh, apologize in advance. Uh, uh, big thanks to Josie, of course, backing me up today. Uh, my awesome mod backing me up. Uh, gonna be doing some uh, watching of the chat. So uh, please be awesome so she don't have to drop the bad hammer on you. Uh, I see Rigbo hanging out as well in the chat. Thanks, everybody, for chilling out. I appreciate that big time. Uh, and again, we're going to be playing the release version of Surviving Mars. Uh, I have, this will be the first time I played it. Uh, we'll see what's new, uh, what's different from the pre-release version that I did get. That was a big thanks to Paradox Interactive. I did have a lot of fun playing that. We played it for like 12 hours, then we played it for like 16 hours, and then we played it for 21 hours. My longest stream ever. Uh, incredibly awesome. That stuff, by the way, is coming up onto YouTube very, very soon. Uh, if you want to watch that as well. Uh, Grim Reaper, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> How have you been? I've been very, very sick. I've <clears throat> been sick for the last couple weeks uh, with a really, really bad flu. Uh, like the survival mode of flus, right? Not just the easy flu, which I got before. The, the flu A, apparently, is the name of that one. Uh, but I got the flu B, which is like, you know, uh, take care of yourself or die kind of uh, flu. That kind of flu. It was really bad. I don't think I've ever been that sick ever in my whole entire life. Uh, that was really, really bad. I was like cold shakes. I, I mean, I literally stopped the stream and I went into like a, uh, like a, a hypothermia mode where I was burning up and freezing at the same time. I was having cold sweats. I got really weak. I couldn't even stand. I got super dizzy, like maximum dizzy, like fall down dizzy. I had to lay down and then I, I had to I actually had, I actually had to have them make me go right in the back of my doctor and uh, let me lay down while I was waiting for my doctor. There's no way I was going to be able to sit. I said, if you want me on the floor out here, that'll be fine. But uh, that's how it's going to be unless you can find me a place to lay down. Uh, so, yeah, maximum dizziness there as well. Uh, not good. Not good. But a bunch of, bunch of, you know, steroids and antibiotics and uh, a whole bunch of cough medicine and whatnot. I've taken cough medicine and a cough drop to try to keep myself from coughing. <clears throat> I can feel it in my throat. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try not to cough. So great to see you, Grim Reaper. Thanks for hanging out here in the stream. Uh, I am not dead, which is fantastic, <laughs> which, is not fan which is fantastic, and it's time to go to Mars, everybody, let's go, boom, here we go, all right, we're ready to go to Mars, ready to play this game, now, I'd like to be the first streamer on Mars, and I'm not kidding, I'm not kidding, they said, Kismet, we need somebody to go to Mars to entertain everybody over there, I'd be like, hey, sign me up for that, bro, sign me up for that, well, after my kids, <laughs> uh <-oh. coughs> there it is, after my kids grow up, of course. After they grow up, go off to college, then I'm off to Mars. Let's do it. All right, so we got a bunch of different options here. Uh, looks pretty much like the other version. We're going to go ahead and do a new game. Now, I like to challenge myself in any game because the beginning of the game is always the most critical part. And I actually had people ask me, Kismet, why do you keep starting the game over and over again? Well, because I don't want it to be easy. I want it to be difficult. I want to understand what are the what are the ways i need to uh to do to keep my uh my colony self-sufficient right so i found a way to actually start the game and not ever have to get another cargo rocket again uh if i do it correctly now it's not easy and it's a lot of balancing and a lot of emergency moments that can happen along the way but we're going to try it out now the one i like uh, so far is futurist the reason why 
is because your breakthroughs go 30% faster, plus you get the sensor right at the very beginning so that, you, of course, you can scan your area much quicker uh, than you normally can. And they don't take any maintenance and they don't take any power, so it's an amazing way to start. So I'm going to go ahead Futurist, <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead. I like to do one small step. I like the, the helmet. Uh, and I'm going to go International Mars Mission. It's going to give me lots of money, but I'm not even going to use the money. I'm just going to show you how to start really, really well, <clears throat> no matter what map you're starting on. All right. Well, let's go next. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take the orbital probes out. I'm going to go ahead and turn my drones down to four. And I'm going to take all this other stuff <clears throat> out of here. Now, uh, now this is the kind of the default that it gives you uh, when you first start the game of how basically, look, psh, this is how you can start. This is what you can use. Uh, and they try to give you a little head start, but I find it's actually not that good for me. Not that good for me. Half fan hanging out. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> whoop, whoop. Kesman is back. That's right, Data Kroon. I am not dead. Still got a really bad cough, though, but I'm going to try to suppress it while I'm talking to you guys. <coughs> oh, best I can. <coughs> Sorry to cough in your guys' ears. I hate to cough on stream, but it's going to happen a lot. I'm still trying to break this cough. I still got <coughs> stuff in my throat. Uh, but all right, so I start with the uh, machine factory, uh, parts factory, and the electronics factory. The reason why I do that is because, of course, I want to set up production very early on. Get over here, phone. I know, I know, I'm streaming. I got it. <laughs> I got it. I'm way ahead of you, phone. Uh, so, yeah, I want to start with the machine parts factory, electronics factory, uh, RC rover, explorer, transport, four drones instead of six, uh, and then I'm going to start 15, 15, and 10. Uh, and I can't add anything else. So that'll be my one and only cargo rocket. We're going to see if we can uh, do it with just that one. Now, I've been looking around here. I did install this uh, earlier uh, today and was testing it. Uh, and I was kind of trying to look at some of these kind of starter spots, right? You got the alpha and the beta here. Uh, some different starter spots. You can see the uh, hardness level. And then, of course, the amount of resources. And then behind the cup here, you can see uh, there's little... Uh, kind of squares here how difficult those particular uh, threats are right so how difficult the dust devils are meteors uh, uh, cold waves all that kind of stuff uh, now I want to go ahead and try this one here this Elsium Alpha uh, about 50% bonus is a lot of materials not so much threats a little bit of meteor threat there uh, but we're gonna go ahead and try that one <clears throat> let's go ahead and start that off uh, so my mission sponsor is the International Space Station people, but it doesn't matter because I don't use the money. Oh, and there we go. Great way to start the day. Uh, I just found a frozen, a nice frozen uh, water. Luckily, I only just dropped it in my lap. Uh, luckily, didn't drop it in my keyboard. Yay. All right. So, yeah, look at that sucker. I didn't realize it was frozen. It's frozen, frozen solid. So I went to open it and I, I it just like completely just squirted out of there. That's okay, it cools me off. <clears throat> Dropped it right in my lap, but it's just water. Luckily it's okay. See, that's what, it's a good thing about not drinking soda and the good thing about not opening stuff over your keyboard and don't have an open container in your keyboard or you'll have a Twitch fail. See, that wasn't too bad. That's just a little water that'll dry. No big deal. But I always try to keep a cap on my water uh, and stuff <clears throat> while I'm playing. Now, while I'm by my computer, I've never dropped anything except for one time a Dr. Pepper, which somebody thought it was funny to shake up. So I was opening the Dr. Pepper and it shot out of there and went into a keyboard. But I got it out of there because it only went on the surface of the keyboard and not down in the keyboard itself. But I see that all the time. People just constantly spraying stuff into their keyboards and into their computers and all that stuff. All right, here we are. All right. We're off and running. Now, right now, it's giving us this spot over here. But you don't have to take the spot it gives you, by the way. You don't have to take the spot it gives you. Now, that looks okay over there. It looks like we got some research. I'm going to pause the game. It looks like we got some research going on over there that we can do. We got some concrete. But you know what? I kind of like the bottom left corner here, a nice flat open area. I'm going to go ahead and say somewhere down in here is where I want to go. Again, you know, I don't have to I don't have to go where it says I have to go. I have to go wherever the heck I want to go. <laughs> That's what's so nice about being me. All right. And I'm trying to find the optimum spot. I'm kind of zooming in and out. I got the game paused right now. 
I'm going to try to find an optimum spot to land here where I'm going to kind of get the most of the uh, area. All right, so that's where I'm going to land. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off with... Now, what I need first is I need uh, engineering and robotics. Now, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. Uh, the one I like the best here is, of course, this one to start because it's going to give me uh, faster, uh, <coughs> faster resource pickup, right? But I actually want to go into engineering because I want to get my poly, uh, my poly engineering uh, factory, my poly uh, factory very early on because I need the poly factory, I need the machine parts factory, and I need the electronics factory to be working very, very quickly. The second I get those domes going, I've got to get that going. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pull in more resources from Earth, which is what I'm trying not to do. So we're going to go ahead and start in engineering because in engineering is where that uh, is now this actually doesn't go the same way every single time it actually is fairly random uh, sometimes you'll get this one see I got the farm first sometimes I'll get the air one first uh, these are actually not set in stone also when you go and you and you find stuff uh, it'll change the order in which you uh, discover it uh, so I go ahead and start with this one and I try to get into engineering and robotics very early on so I'm going to start with those two now this one I've got automatically so I can put that sensor down right away uh, and then this is extractor upgrade. Don't want to do that. Uh, that one, uh, I'll go ahead and put that as three just in case. Uh, and then notice the game's not going yet because it's not time to start it yet. Because now I'm going to have to uh, reveal uh, the area around me. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, start uh, kind of clearing the uh, area around my particular thing. Oh, look at that. It went to five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Not, oh, look, that's something new. That's something new. Now, before it was only four that you could do, but here you can do up to nine uh, kind of pre-scanning right away. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I dig that. All right. Well, that's something new already. There we go. Something new off the bat. Scott said, hi, CV. Hello to you, Daddy Cron. Uh, well, I think you uh, contaminated me, Kismet. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad, bro. My bad. My bad. Sorry if you got sick, Matt. I cannot not hear my stuff. Oh, I can hear it. It's just low. It's just down low. Let me crank it up a little bit here. Let's see. Sorry there, everybody. I had to wipe my nose. Wipe my nose. I had to go stealthy boy for a second. <clears throat> All right. All right. So here we are. We've started. Uh, now, of course, you know, for every time, if you're just letting the game run, uh, it's actually uh, burning your resources uh, just by letting it run. It's also burning your time in which it takes to uh, discover things. Now, right now, there's nothing much I can do. The reason why is because the uh, one I chose is not the one that it gave me at the very beginning. I chose down here. Uh, my own little spot. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let this run. And now there is something I can do while I'm waiting, though. I can run all the way over here and discover that one. And I can run all the way over here and I can pick up this metal while I'm waiting. I might as well because they got nothing else to do. Got nothing else to do. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and wait for this first one to scan. And then once that first one can scan, then we can go ahead and put down a little sensor tower. Now, we can't put down a sensor tower right now because it's actually unexplored where we currently are <clears throat> so they're gonna buzz all the way over there hopefully they make it back we'll find out we'll find out and let's see what are we at 30 percent so we're gonna let that run full speed uh and uh because you don't have to go again you don't have to go to this you can also start with a probe and then go ahead and probe the area but i like to start where i don't have to get any further stuff so i try to make it exceptionally difficult the reason why i do that is the reason why i make it so difficult in the very beginning is so that you can you can do it on any hardness level on any hard if you can do it with no uh, resupply with only one ship then you can do it on any mode that's that's the way games are if you could do if you can master the beginning of the game it doesn't matter what mode you play it in and see that's what I did in Fallout 4 that's what I did in uh, They Are Billions that's what I did uh, trying to do in Subnautica uh, is master that beginning. Once you master the beginning, then, you know, boom, you've built up all these resources right at the very beginning. Boom. The rest of the game is just easy mode after that. 
Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. So we're going to go ahead and wait for that to go. Now, it does uh, burn a lot of your souls when you do this. But uh, I do remember kind of down here in this area has better resources than up here. So I don't want to go. I don't want to waste my time uh, going up there and then dropping all my resources there and then have to move back down uh, later on. So we'll just skip ahead of that uh, by doing this. Again, we got uh, our peeps doing stuff while we're waiting like so. Uh, and while we're waiting for that, uh, let's see if we can build anything. I don't think we can. Let's go ahead and see. Can we build it? No, we can't build Someone it. Someone joked we found kryptonite. It ah. was because of the greenish-yellow hue of the beryl crystals. Oh, Max Faith the Jedi coming in with a two-month sub love. Thank you, everybody, by the way, who did stay subbed, who everybody was showing me that love. Whoa, good say goodbye to those bits. That was epic. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that resub, love. Appreciate you coming in, saying Kismet. I believe in what you do, bro. Uh, I'm gonna keep that sub going. I appreciate it greatly. <clears throat> appreciate it greatly. And I'm trying to push myself to stream here. And I would, I had a big thing planned last last week. I was like, my kids are off school, and I can stream more, and I can do more, and all of that stuff. And then, nope, <clears throat> nope. Got hit with the massive flu. Uh, flu B, by the way. Uh, let's see some love and hype in the chat for McPhail the Jedi for that awesome thing. Still only go up to four on console. Uh, up to four. Up to four what? What did, I, what did I miss? What did I miss? Yeah, I think it's the International Space Station or something is the... Uh, the sponsor I don't know I don't even look because I don't even care because I don't uh, I don't really use the cash you'll see that I don't use the cash at all um, because I don't need to all right get my little anomaly guy found Ah, oh, there we go way up there how are we doing over here this guy's almost full yep almost full all right so we're just waiting for where we're at right here now why did I start down here and not up there uh, the reason why is because uh, I've played this map just a little bit earlier, <clears throat> and I was exploring the uh, map areas, uh, and I discovered that down here is actually a better place to start on this particular map. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start down here. But it does take a lot longer. Again, probably cost you, you know, three to five souls uh, to get that first one unlocked, and then you can start taking all the stuff out of your ship. Uh, you can start uh, looking for resources around that area. But what I really want to do right away is make a uh, signal pole so that all the stuff around me will actually go at 400% uh, speed. So I can really start anywhere. And that's the great thing about starting as a futurist uh, is that you can start anywhere that you want to start. There we go. That one's already ready to go. going to go and bring him back. Uh, and how's he looking on power? I can't do anything. I uh, can't do anything on power yet, uh, or I can't build anything yet, again, until it's scanned here. We're almost there. 87%. 87%. Uh, glad to see you're feeling better, Kismet. Thank you, McPhail the Jedi. Appreciate you hanging in there. Appreciate you uh, showing the love, uh, keeping that sub going, getting your baby dragon all built up. He's going to be a big dragon soon. You never know. Got to keep him going. Uh, we always have your back, buddy. Say, oh, thank you, Lord Winter. Appreciate that. Again, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Now, again, no backseat gaming. Uh, don't tell me anything about spoilers or whatever. That's my normal uh, chat uh, my normal chat rules anyway. But for some reason, people love to backseat game in games like this. Or Sector like scanned. Anomaly found. There we go. <clears throat> oh, perfect timing. Get over there and scan that baby. All right, so we've scanned this area right here, uh, and we've uh, found a little bit of something-something. We got, uh, let's see, we got uh, some metal there, and we've got some rare metals here. We're going to scan down in here. Now, what I want to do uh, right away uh, is to look at where do I want to have my optimum uh, antenna, probably, probably right up here at the top part. Uh, so let's go ahead and first, let's go ahead and pause the game. Now, one of the things I like to do at the very beginning, of course, is to get all of my resources together, right? Like, where am I going to put all my resources? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and stick them by this rock, because most likely I'm not going to be able to move this rock out of the way uh, if I can get to there. But actually, let's just put it on this side for now. Let's just put it right here. Let's say right there. All right, so we started with polymers, and then we're going to put electronics, 
Uh, and let's see. Polymers, electronics, parts. Uh, and then I, I like to put metals up above. Because metals is the one I probably use the most. Because, of course, this guy is coming back and forth. And I'm going to tell him to go ahead and put all that metal onto that thing. Which, you didn't, if you didn't know that, you can actually go out and grab stuff out of the ship. He can go ahead and pick stuff up. Or he can transport stuff back and forth. And then he'll just put it in the thing itself. I brought it over and let the drones do it. But you don't need to. You Actually, it's faster if he does it. It's faster if he grabs a huge amount of it and then drops it off himself. <clears throat> there he goes. <coughs> Loading that up with a ton of metal. Now all my little drones here are going to go to work. Vehicle battery low. And they're going to start to grab everything and start to put it over here. Now my vehicle battery Research is complete. Anomaly right analyzed. So I'm going to go ahead and start by um, hitting the J key. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start by uh, making a little bit of, of power out here. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just run a little power line like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this guy up here. Now, they're going to go up and start that power. Now, that power is solely going to be for charging up uh, all of my little ships here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them over here. And how's this one doing? That one's doing fine. <clears throat> and I'll actually move this guy so that, he, so that the actual area of this guy is up high enough like this. So I'm still getting the ship. But if I go up just enough, I'm getting the ship. I'm getting all of the uh, the areas where it's holding the stuff. But also I'm getting this metal way up here too. So once they're done cleaning out the ship and taking out all the resources and putting it here, they will actually run up uh, and try to grab that uh, metal up there as well. Now I'm waiting for this to kick in. <coughs> and then it's going to charge up my stuff. <coughs> charge up my stuff a bit. Apologize for the coughing. It's going to happen. All right, so again, I want it to probably be way up here so that I'm getting kind of the maximum area. So I'm going to go ahead and put it up here. Now, it's going to say blocking object too far from drone commander. Blocking objects. So I'm going to try to get up here as far as I can, but also to be in a spot where it can actually reach it. Now, see, this can see these resources, so all the drones have access to these resources as well i'm gonna go ahead and prioritize that as number one there we go that one's good to go charge that one up all right this one's way up here now let's get that going and how we look in here all right so we got the first one the rcs can harvest a little bit or they got this one uh and the second one there we go Right now we're doing social, where more applicants are going to appear when I go to uh, bring people to my thing here. Uh, but I want to keep going in engineering, so I'm going to go ahead and click that one next, and then <clears throat> into robotics. So I go very heavy engineering robotics in the very beginning. This way I can get to polymers, uh, the polymer factory, uh, and then eventually get to the drone factory and all that stuff, which I'm going to need later on. <clears throat> and I'm also uh, doing a maximum speed right now, as you can see. Uh, down there. Uh, I've got that little speed on maximum because it has a tendency to go a little bit slow uh, for me anyway uh, when I'm trying to do stuff. <clears throat> All right, there we go. We've got that up. Now this is going to get a boost of 237%. Uh, this one's going to get 232, 365, 352, 367. So it's going to go basically uh, 2 to 300 percent faster uh, on the scanning, which is what I definitely wanted to do just from this one scanner right here and of course it doesn't take any uh doesn't take any resources other than the resources it took to build it it doesn't take any power and it doesn't take uh any maintenance so i can make a bunch of those and just let them sit out there and uh, allow me to scan sector scanned there we go so we scan that pretty quick all right so we got some metal here and we have got some rare materials very very nice looking good so far we're gonna keep on scanning this way uh yeah, let's get that one. Let's actually make this one. Let's make this number two. Yeah, I like the fact they gave you more. They're giving you more uh, uh, scan abilities so you don't run out of scan stuff, which is cool. Which is cool. All right, how we doing? Where's my little guy at? He's still working on it. He's still working on it. All right. Now, while you're in this stage right now, which is kind of the scanning stage... You want to be utilizing uh, your uh, guy here to get as much metal as possible. Right now, there's about four metals, so we're going to go ahead and help these guys a little bit quick here. Uh, we're going to have them go and... Uh, Anomaly analyzed. Oh, there we go. So we got that done. 
And we got the research live from Mars done. Uh, scientists and botanists have plus 10% performance. So, all right, very nice. Uh, and again, we're trying to get into engineering to get the polymer thing going as quickly as possible. And then we'll focus on power. Uh, and then, of course, moisture evaporators would be amazing. But I, for some reason, I get it way late at the very end for some reason. Uh, but uh, moisture evaporators would be amazing as well. Now, the whole point, of course, is you're trying to establish a base on Mars. And once you establish that base on Mars, you want, of course, to be self-sufficient. So you don't have to constantly be bringing in resources from Earth, right? Uh, and if you balance it just right, especially in the very beginning, if I don't use up these materials uh, needlessly, Milestone achieved. I'll be fine. Sector scanned. Oh, there we go. Oh, and we got some water over here. Very nice. What do we got here? Very low average. No, that's not bad. So we can build a dome here uh, that can get these two kind of uh, metal and... Uh, metal we've got in there, 800, 502, nice. Uh, we get metal and the rare materials that allow us to build uh, <coughs> mechanical parts and electronics. <coughs> All right. Uh, that's going to be good. So we'll probably build a dome uh, somewhere like this, right? So I want to be as close to the water as possible. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go this way, get both of those. And then I'll probably put another dome on this side and then chain the water uh, through at some point. Uh, but I'll probably build the first dome on this right side and uh, work on that later on. All right, how are we looking? Uh, that's been scanned. And we'll go ahead and bring him right back to here. Now, another thing I need to be doing right now is figuring out where the concrete is, right? Doesn't look like I found any Sector concrete scanned. Yet. Oh, there we go. Uh, doesn't look like we found any concrete. There we go. I'm going to scan up there. It uh, doesn't look like we found any concrete, so we want to find some concrete and get the concrete going right away. Now, it doesn't necessarily, the concrete doesn't necessarily have to be right next to our base. It can actually be fairly remote uh, away from uh, our main base. So we want to go ahead and just kind of search around these areas around here and see if we can find some. And really, in the beginning, what you're trying to do is build up resources, right? So I'm trying to build up resources uh, like uh, uh, metal, uh, which is what I'm doing right now. Get the metal there, bro. Come on. What you doing up there? The dude's up there napping. How are we looking? This guy's on his way back. And again, you don't have to be in a hurry, by the way. You don't have to be in a hurry to make your dome and that kind of stuff. Though I have done it by like day eight, uh, by soul eight before. It uh, depends on where you land, if you get a good landing spot, uh, if you can find good stuff and all of that. <clears throat> put that in there. There we go. And let's go ahead and check and see if there's any other metal around. No metal right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just have this guy go ahead and just charge up while he's waiting. How's this guy looking? He's looking good. Sector got, scanned. Sector scanned. It's got uh, water and uh, uh, and some other stuff. Very nice. Uh, and some uh, concrete. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Concrete right there. Uh, all right. So we need to go ahead and look at this concrete here. We need to scan this one. Are we scanning that one next? Yes, we are. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to get our concrete going. Now, the concrete extractor, when you put it down, it's going to have a certain number. It's over there on the right-hand side, uh, right over here. Uh, very vital to look at this, by the way. Now, right now it says grade low, which means you're going to get it at a slow rate. Uh, but right now it says available resource 26. Now, if I rotate it, you're going to see that's going to go up. And as I move it around, you're going to see it's a bigger uh, number or a smaller number. Right now, looking like 370, 374... Again, I rotate it around and see what the bigger number is. Oh, here's a bet! Anna coming in with an eight-month sub love. Boom! Bye-bye to those bits. <laughs> Thank you, Anon, for coming in, showing that love. Let's show some love in the chat. I see Dax in there. What's up, Dax? Thanks for hanging out. Chen saying hi in the chat. Hello, Chen. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the stream. <coughs> I apologize for the coughing. I'm trying not to cough. I did take massive amount of cough medicine and a cough drop. I will try to to refrain from coughing in your ear. I I actually face away from the microphone when I cough. Uh, usually I turn it off if I'm just going to cough temporarily, but I'm going to be coughing on and off throughout the whole stream. So. I do apologize for that, but I have been incredibly ill. Probably the worst sickness I've ever had. 
Uh, that was really, really bad. All right, 381 looks like the current record. Let's see, 381. Access that other side, maybe more, but oh well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, here's here's what you do. Now, I got that started, and I notice how it's got like a little symbol there. Uh, that means that it doesn't have any drone access to that particular thing. Uh, but I can go ahead and bring my guy up here, uh, my little uh, temp, my kind of RC rover here, which is kind of like your mobile building base. And I'm going to run it up here. Now, one of the problems is, though, is that it's not going to have. It's not going to have any resources to be able to build it. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and see where the overlap of the two things are, right? So where this can reach and also this right here, which I'm using as kind of a drone hub. So it's really just below here. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and move our resources <coughs> uh, for right now. Some of our resources up here. So what does this need? It needs mechanical parts and metal. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, move our mechanical parts. Sector scanned. Anomaly here. found. Ooh, anomaly there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move that stuff like this. Now, the thing to do is just to get rid of this. Uh, or you can also just take your guy here and have him pick it up. Like this. Pick up some of it. And pick up some of this. And then run it all the way up here. Now, that's the real fast way to do this, is just to have your guy come up here and unload. And then the drones don't have to run all the way back down uh, to get those resources. Like so. And there we go. All right, so that's off and running. Now, one of the things I did learn, I was putting my uh, power up real close to this, right? Which is great, because you don't want it to the line to actually have trouble. But I actually found it's better to be away from it because then it has more space to store all that extra rock that it creates. So I'm actually going to uh, move the uh, power down just a bit here uh, and then I'll run a power line. Like so. Now that solar panel is going to be able to operate uh, this particular uh, item right there just on its own. So it's going to be totally autonomous. It's only going to run during the day, obviously. <coughs> it's only going to run during the day, obviously. Um, because, of course, solar only works during the day. But that's okay. We're just getting just getting started. So we'll pull that back. And we got this guy here. He can go out and go ahead and see if he can find us something new to research. So always keep your research going. Uh, let's see. I probably want to do that one next. Actually, maybe this one. Uh, I hate that farm one. <clears throat> I find the farms don't actually work all that great. But you actually want to research all of these so that you can get your uh, uh, your 40 of them done by day 100. Uh, because those are only 1,000, so it goes pretty quickly. <clears throat> all right, that one's scanning that one. This is all charged up. Let's have this go and get that metal right there. I saw that metal way up there. So you always want all of your stuff to be running, doing something, always be doing something uh, in the game. Sector <laughs> scanned. Ooh, 55. Nice. Uh, one of the things I like to do early on, uh, while you're waiting to get concrete, while you're waiting to do all that stuff, <clears throat> is to uh, uh, get uh, lots and lots of metal because you're going to need that. You're also going to need lots and lots of anomaly uh, analyzed. <clears throat> lots and lots of concrete, and I need to be able to see it from here, right? So it's got to be by this. So it's got to bring the concrete from here, put it in the concrete thing. And then it can run it all the way down here, or I can run it all the way down there. Now, I don't want my drones taking it back and forth, because that's a lot of work for them to do. Uh, so either I can put it there, or I can put it here. I, I need to make a choice. So what I'm going to do is, since these guys can only see to here, I'm going to put it about midway, right about there. <clears throat> and then my other drones can uh, chain it from there, if they want to. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and put the concrete there. Now, there we go. Now, when these drones don't have anything to do, what they'll do is they'll go ahead and grab the concrete, run it down here. Now, I need a certain amount of concrete to uh, start my first dome. Uh, I'm going to need at least uh, 80 concrete, which is a lot of concrete uh, to produce. Uh, right now, I've only found one concrete place so far uh, around my area. Oop, I'm going to keep this scanning. I do like the more scanning. That's cool. I like the fact you can scan, uh, you can queue up more scans than you could. Sector before. scanned. Oh, and there it is right there. All right, we're going to go ahead and override everything we got. What we want right here, the polymer factory. Uh, how are we looking? That one's already, see, if it's already into it, then I don't like to mess with it. 
Um, but uh, if it isn't, then I will overwrite it. All right, we'll go with this one. And we're just going to do this one here on physics uh, just so that it will open up the next one, right? So it'll push this one. All right, there, I don't have a drone hub right now. Actually, that's the one I want. This one here is going to increase my uh, my sponsor by 100, uh, 100 every single time. So I'm going to get that boost uh, every single time, uh, and it's going to make my research go faster. So I definitely want to do that one. Uh, what do we got over here? Moisture evaporators. I don't have any of those. Allows me to clear stuff I'm going to destroy, which I'm definitely going to do that eventually. Uh, probably override that once I find Anomaly them. found. Oh, anomaly found. Now, the second I find these, I send my dude over there as quick as possible. <clears throat> and I'll send my other guy over there to get that metal, too. All right. Uh, and this right here is going to go ahead and start up during the day. And it's going to go ahead and keep collecting that. And it's going to keep running it down. How are we looking right now? Six of 180. Uh, so there's no reason to build a dome yet. <coughs> until I have enough resources. Uh, and let's see, we've cleared this. We've cleared all the resources out. It's got four drones attached to it. Now, I leave this ship here. The reason why I, I leave it here is because I don't have a drone. I didn't take a drone factory at the very beginning or a drone hub at the very beginning. So I use my actual ship as my drone hub. So I just leave it. Uh, and this way I can see all of this area uh, and utilize this whole... Anomaly area. analyzed. Oh, something. I got some new tech. What did I get? Uh, biotech. I got some water reclaiming. And that's about it. Yeah, let's go ahead and get this one. That was only 900, too. So that's not really, that's not that bad. Oh, wow. Actually, all my research is, is a little bit less. It's 100 less. Hmm. Nice. Nice. Uh, and then this is reclaiming water, which actually is a pretty decent one. But I've got a whole bunch of other ones going for right now. So we'll let that run. All right, so what we need to do is basically we need to get as much concrete as we can. Now, we can actually speed this up by creating a second concrete uh, if we want uh, right over here. And we're going to go ahead and see how much we get out of this one. 353, 35. Now, the other one's going to be in the way. I want to kind of rotate it as best I can. 42. And I like to really kind of make sure I've gotten the most efficient way. Yeah, it looks like 342 is going to be the thing. Uh, now, I also need to see uh, if this can reach. There we go. I want to make sure that this can uh, this can see this and these and also sector uh, scan. Thing I'm going to build. Uh, otherwise, I can't. It's not going to do me any good. 342. Boom. All right, we're going to start a second one, and we'll go ahead and build another solar panel. I'm just going to build it. Oh, wrong thing. Build another solar panel right next to this one like so and then I'm going to try to create the most minimal amount of uh, connection between here and there right through here now the reason why I want to do that is because I don't want to obstruct where it's going to put all of its rock right it's going to have all this rock research storage, complete and I, I'm going to let it just go ahead and use all that rock storage uh, and try not to get anything too close to these things right same thing with your water extractors, your materials extractors. Don't put them too close. Give them lots of room so they have lots of waste uh, space uh, to get that going. All right. So they're going to use the materials that I have here to build a second one uh, and get that going. Uh, and let's see if we have any more stuff that we've discovered we can research. No. All right. We'll go ahead and run that guy back so he can uh, do that. How's this guy doing? He is full. I'm going to run him back. And I'm just going to tell him, let's have him go up here and just drop all that metal right there. Nice and easy. I do things my Sector own way. Scanned. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, why solar panel uh, rather than windmill? Great question, iCrafter. Uh, when you first start off in the game, uh, everything takes resources, right? Now, again, in my particular case, 
I challenge myself to go above and beyond. I play the hardest modes, the survival modes, right? Or the hard modes. Not permadeath, though. I don't like permadeath. But I do like uh, as uh, to turn it on the hardest mode possible. So what I try to do is I try to say, okay, what? how can I win this game at the very beginning? And you're like, Kismet, how do you win a game at the very beginning? Well, case in point, Wasteland Tycoon Run in Fallout 4. Come back for that. If you watch my schedule down below, I'll show you how to get started in Fallout 4 and win the game within the first 10 levels. That's right. Within the first 10 levels, you win because you're basically making so much cash, you can go buy a ton of stuff. You know, eventually you will uh, you will succeed. Same thing with this game. Now, if I can start the game with one rocket, one resource rocket, and then build up all my resources and build a self-sustaining colony on Mars that does not require another cargo rocket. That means I can play in any mode, any way, and boom, I win the game. That's how, that's how I master games, especially these type of games, building games, RTS games. It's all about that exceptionally good start in the very beginning. Now, right now, actually, I'm having a really good start because over here, I've got my two main resources I need, metal and uh, rare materials. I've also got water over here, which is awesome. I'm going to build me a couple domes here. Uh, fly some peeps in, and boom, I'll build myself a polymer uh, factory in between uh, so that uh, both domes could uh, work on the polymer factory. Uh, and then you'll see me build it out uh, a bit as well. Uh, so let's keep on going. Now, again, you're in no hurry. You don't have to rush and do all of that stuff. Uh, oh, there we go. Ooh, we want to get that one for sure. Uh, actually, I want to get that one. There we go. See, I'm getting an uh, increase there for 100, 100 there and another 100 there. So that's 200 increase. Uh, so definitely want to spend it on those first. Uh, and then we'll come back. Because this basically these two will make the rest of it go faster. Uh, all right. And we're st still scanning. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and just clear this area where I'm at. <clears throat> Uh, and we'll keep that scanning. And again, now my uh, my things are only working at nighttime. And again, oh, well, because there's resources. Hold on, let me back up. Let me back up. That was a good question, by the way. Give them 500 kids caps for that great question. Uh, in the solar panel here, the upkeep is metal. Now, metal on this particular map is fairly abundant, right? So I can repair this easily, right? But if I use the wind turbine, then the maintenance is machine parts. Now, I've only got so many machine parts. You can see I've only got 11 of them over there right now. Now, I need those machine parts for other things right now. Now, of course, I could, you know, because I have $27 billion, I could go ahead and just pull some more machine parts from Earth if I chose to uh, and made it easy. But I'm not trying to make it easy. It, that's, that's, not, that's not how you master a game is just play it on easy mode. The, the way you master a game is you go, okay, now, what do I need to do to set up my production early on so this entire area can just sustain itself, right? And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. I'm going to show you how to do that right today. So the first thing, concrete. Get that going. Get your metal going, right? Get this guy going out, collecting metal as much as he can. Just roll over the area. It'll tell you where all the metal is. It's over here right now. Boom. My guy's going to go over there and get it. Of course, be researching whatever you can research, right? Set up a little charge station, a little solar charge station for your guys. Make sure to keep them nice and charged up. Uh, and, of course, you know, concrete and metal at the very beginning. Concrete, metal, concrete, metal. Uh, and keep that going uh, as much as you can uh, for the least resources as possible, right? Because this is only going to cost me metal. Metal, I get a bunch of it in the very beginning. Of course, later on, it becomes more scarce. So you gotta actually start, uh, you got to actually start mining the metal. Now, you can't mine that metal, by the way, or this uh, stuff if you don't have a dome nearby. So you got to have a dome nearby. Now, this is pretty nice because this is actually right next to each other. Um, but you got to have a dome uh, overlapping it so that you can actually farm those things, right? Otherwise, you can't, you can't put anything down. Like if I just said, hey, because I've discovered the area. If I just say, hey, I want to go ahead and do a metals extractor too far from domes, right? So you got to have a dome next to it. To actually get these resources now the exception is water water you don't have to have the dome next to it uh, you can just put a water extractor down there uh, and then make sure you've got power and of course run pipes and all that stuff uh, to where you want it to go uh, so that's very very nice uh, very very nice all right how are we looking out here up 39 looking good now a lot of the stuff you're doing in the very beginning just basically babysitting uh, babysitting the game 
Uh, right now we're at 20 and 20, so it's about 40. <coughs> and I need about 80 <laughs> before I start going. So that's why I do not use uh, the uh, wind turbines in the beginning, because of the upkeep. The upkeep uses up my uh, advanced resources, and I don't want to use my advanced resources in the very beginning. You want to use your basic resources, which are solar panels. Now, the larger solar panel gives you more power, but of course, the maintenance cost is double, uh, and the cost of a small solar panel is one, but it gives you two. So actually, if you think about it, uh, power-wise, you get more power out of three, because so, that's sector what, scan four. anomaly. You're found. gonna get more power out of four basic solar panels, but the upkeep is going to be higher, right? So the upkeep is going to be two versus getting five power, and uh, the upkeep of one, uh, if you if you understand. So basically, it says maintenance 0.5, right? And if I make four of them, that's a half plus a half. That's one. And four, that's, you get it. You get it. That's two, right? So that's going to be two metal it's going to take to run those four solar panels. Uh, if I do one large one, it's going to give me five power, but only one maintenance. So in the long run, it's actually uh, better resource-wise. It's more efficient resource-wise. But again, this would give Vehicle me two each one. Low. Uh, this would give me two each one, which actually be eight power, right? So two, four, six, eight would be eight power for two. This would be five power for one. But then, of course, if I make two of them, then it's going to take me two maintenance, and I'm going to get 10 power, right? So in the long run, the larger solar panels are the way to go. I don't even bother with the smaller ones. I don't even bother with the smaller ones. Just keep your guy, uh, keep your dude uh, bringing in the resources. Bringing in uh, the metal at the very beginning. I'm going to have him bring that baby in. Uh, and I'm going to have him go ahead and drop this load down here because we're going to need that down here. And I'm going to tell him to beeline right to there. Uh, and let's see. Did we uh, get any more anomalies? I thought I heard one. Yes, we did. Right there. Go get it. And again, this is pretty much what I'm doing is going between my three different vehicles at the very beginning. Uh, I'm using my RC Rover to extend uh, my uh, location where I landed. Right? So it's up here just doing its own thing. Doing its own thing. Making concrete. Repairing the repairing the concrete mixers uh, and then running the concrete down here where this one can overlap and see that And when I'm getting close to about 80 right now, I've got about 60 Then I need to start thinking about my dome. How am I gonna build my dome? How am I gonna do water? How am I gonna do power? How am I gonna do all of that stuff? Let's go ahead and pause and let's go ahead and start on that dome Now again, I want the domes to be together I'm gonna do two domes and the reason why I do that is so I have enough people to run the factories that are gonna be in both domes uh, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate it this way, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and try to get, still get that object, but be as far this way as possible. I'm trying to get close to the water so I don't have to run the pipes really, really far. Now, I've also aimed uh, the actual piping and that kind of stuff uh, in that direction right here so that I can run the piping uh, directly in as well as run the power uh, and all that stuff. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the water and uh, probably put power uh, either here or down here because uh, if I put another dome here, which I can put the dome down here too, it doesn't really matter where I put the dome, uh, but <clears throat> if I put uh, the power over here, I can just run the power to here and to here at the same time. Now again, you don't want to crowd your stuff. You don't want to take up all this space because this is where all your factories and stuff go uh, kind of around your dome. So don't, don't crowd that area uh, with stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just make this a little bit higher, though, because I don't want to uh, I don't want to uh, uh, be right up against this little sandbar here, which is kind of cutting into my space. So I'm going to go up a bit uh, more, right up against the ship here, as, as kind of close as I can get, and boom, that's good enough. That's good enough. You know what? I might actually put the dome on this side, because if I put the dome on, the second dome on that side then what it does is it overlaps these so that it can actually, they can do mining as well. So both domes can do mining. Both domes can do the polymer uh, area. So that actually would be the smarter choice uh, in the long run. <clears throat> All right, so they're going to work on that. Uh, and let's go ahead and start on our uh, water here. Now, again, I'm going to go just, it doesn't have to be right on top of it, by the way. It's going to extract the same amount, even if it's on top of it or if it's not on top of it. Uh, and again, like to leave it lots of space now uh, so that the water extractor can build up all of that extra uh, stuff that's going to uh, build up around it. <coughs> now, for every one of these uh, domes, 
I find it takes about 12 to 15 large solar panels. Now I'm gonna hit K, uh, which is the battery, right? Or J, uh, this is on PC, uh, for the uh, solar panels. Now actually what I wanna do is go ahead and just think about how I'm gonna do my power first. I'm gonna run it nice and straight like that. Uh, and then I'm also gonna hit V, uh, which allows me to do piping. And I'm gonna run my piping, but my piping actually, it really needs to go like this to uh, interact with that. Now I can just, I can change my mind, by the way, before you build it, since I have it paused, I can go ahead and take this out like this, and I can go ahead and put the water extractor in again, but this time rotating it in such a way uh, that it is actually lined up uh, with the piping, right? So uh, you can undo if you have paused it, uh, and you can take that out, and now it's gonna be nice and lined up with the piping and bring that power in like that uh, or maybe not maybe not we'll just we'll run that nice and straight and again one of my favorite things about this game is the fact that you can run the power underneath the piping that is really really cool uh so also when i when i'm extracting over here i don't store it over there i like to store it as close to the dome as possible so if i wanted to actually create like a water tower i want to put that water tower nice and close to the actual dome itself, so there's not a lot of space between the dome and the actual thing should I lose water, uh, should the water extractor go out, maybe it doesn't have enough power to run, uh, I will have the backup uh, stuff right there. So I, this time I'm gonna go ahead and build two water towers right there. Now notice how I've got the actual thing overlapping this, this pipe so that it should, in theory, automatically attach itself to the pipe um, because it's so close. Uh, so we're going to start with that. Now, another thing we're going to do is we're going to start working on our air as well. Now, again, notice how I put it way far away, uh, the actual production away from the dome. Uh, and then, of course, the storage of that stuff nice and close to the dome. Uh, and there we go, like so. And then again, I'm going to go ahead and put that storage of the air nice and close. Now, I don't like to be I don't like to cut off the edge of the of the actual thing. I like them to be nice and close but not cut it off, something like that. And I'm actually gonna hold down shift so I can do two of them. Again, I have it overlapping the pipe. So in theory, these should automatically kick in and do that. So my air and water is now styling. Now this right here has a certain area. Notice how this is kind of in that area, right? Notice how this one's in the area. So that's probably not the best spot. So let's go ahead and take that out. Let's make, a, let's make another uh, spot choice. Let's rotate it here a little bit move it down a little bit away from here. So this has lots of area to store all that extra uh, uh, rocks and things like that. Now you can take the rocks and use your drones uh, to uh, go elsewhere. Now I also need to make sure that I'm not outside of the area of my ship here that I'm using as a drone uh, area. And it's just within, which is nice. Uh, so I can still get the water. I can get all my power and everything in there. Uh, and then eventually uh, build a second dome down there. All right, so that's uh, air and uh, water now squared away. Uh, and now we need to do a bunch of power. Now, I'm again, I'm probably going to put the other dome uh, right over here. Let's take a look at it before we get going. Say something along, eh, something along that line. Right in there, maybe. Yeah, maybe right about there. Now, why do I put two domes close to each other? Is because I need a lot of people. Right, so you're using your small domes, so you need to have a lot of people in each of those domes uh, to run the factories, to run uh, the uh, uh, all the stuff that you're trying to do, right? All the factories and production you're trying to do very early on. But I only build one dome first because you got to get that one dome going uh, before everything else. <clears throat> all right, let's let that run. Now, all the little drones from here are going to go right to work, grabbing all the resources from down here, running them up here. And again, we want to keep our stuff going here. Uh, looks like there's some left here. Let's go get that. Oh, that actually needs some power first. That needs some power first. There we go. How are we looking out here? That one's scanning that Anomaly one. analyzed. Oh, new tech. What have we done? Ooh, drone hub and uh, right here. Oh, there we go. Now, this one's really good right here. Actually, sometimes I get this as the very first one, which is cool. Uh, this one will boost your oxygen production uh, greatly. Uh, really good one to kick in. Eventually, I'm going to do Drone Hub, but I'm not going to do that right now. I need this Polymer one first. Uh, and 
think that's about it. Actually, I could go this one so I can further this. Every time you discover one of these, by the way, it kind of furthers the line, right? So if I go into high rise or if I go into whatever, it will actually push it to the next one, uh, which is nice, which is nice. All right, again, we're getting that concrete. We're trying to bring it halfway down so then this can see it. And then these drones can go and get it. Now, I don't have that many drones, so it takes me a lot longer to get stuff done. But, of course, I have two factories to start. So I don't have to actually tech my way all the way into the factories. And then Sector the scanned. Anomaly found. <coughs> Another anomaly. Nice. Oh, and it's right over by the first one. Cool. Go get it, bro. <coughs> I see a lot of metal over there, too. All right. This guy all charged up. Not quite fully charged, but we'll send him out there to get some metal while we're waiting. Waiting for the daytime. All right, and these guys are doing a good job. They're getting this all set up. Now, I do like to get kind of a backlog before I start the dome. I like to get a backlog of air and uh, water uh, so I have a bit of a fallback on it. Now, we're going to go ahead again and work on the power again. We're going to put the other dome right over here. My master made me this collar. Squirrel! He is a good and smart master so that I may talk. Squirrel! Squirrel. Uh, Wally hanging out. What's up, Wally? It just confirms what Kismet says. The rover manipulators held the silver-white mineral up to the camera just as the chemical analysis came through. We found tellurium. Ooh. Technologies in robotics trees gain 10% boost. Woohoo! That's what I like to hear. Now, the great thing about this game, by the way, now I couldn't do a review on it before, but I can do a review on it now because it's past the 15th. I was hoping to do it on release day, too. Uh, uh, Kiz, did you ever figure out how to destroy a conduit? Yes, I did, actually, just earlier today. Uh, just earlier today, which I have, my brain is actually functioning. <laughs> uh, usually after about 21 hours of playing, your brain is not functioning at full capacity. Uh, but I did figure out how to do it. I'll show you that here in just a bit. Um, but, uh, one of the cool things about this game, uh, is the fact that, uh, it is different every time. It's, uh, it randomizes a lot of stuff. It randomizes how you get your stuff here. It randomizes what you might find. Uh, the resources sometimes are in the same place. If you play the same map, uh, they'll be fairly, uh, fairly consistently in the same place. But, uh, all the other stuff is fairly random, right? Random meteors, random dust storms, random stuff, uh, that will come through and try to get you. Try to get ya. Get ya, get ya. All right, keep that guy busy. This guy doing his thing. Oh, he already got it done. All right, where are we going? Where are we scanning next? Right here. Now, sometimes what I do is I just leave the guy there because if he scans an anomaly here, I can just run him down uh, and he can work on that anomaly down there. Uh, all right, looking good. Again, I did have the flu for a while, uh, and here they are starting to stack. All of the resources now down here. They've got the polymers down there. Uh, they've got the metals and the concrete coming through. Now, actually, polymers, I've learned, is actually not the very first thing I'm going to do. Actually, the very first thing I'm going to do is machine parts. The reason why I need to do machine parts is if you look at this stuff here, this just requires metal, right? So I need to keep that metal coming in. That just requires metal. But this, the water, requires machine parts. So I've got to have concrete and I've got to have machine parts to keep that uh, up and running, uh, as well as later on when I actually uh, I go to uh, power my uh, stuff here. Oh, if I can get the right thing. There we go. Uh, notice here this takes concrete and polymers. Uh, and also, <clears throat> when you go to build it, uh, it has an update, uh, an, uh, an upkeep of one polymer. Meteor so I've only incoming. Got... Oops, look out. Uh... Did I say harm it? No, it hasn't been built yet. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh... So uh, basically, uh, uh, I don't want to burn all of my resources in the very beginning. So I don't want to be building that power, uh, the, the power uh, battery in the very beginning because otherwise it'll just sit there and use the battery, which is great, which will speed it up, but it'll actually burn all my polymers, which I need to save for later on when I get after I get my dome built. And I don't, I don't need to do anything else. I need to build that dome and I need to put, put a place for them to sleep. And once I have that, once I have an apartment, then I'm doing okay. Then I'm doing okay, and I just want to keep scanning as much as I can, keep grabbing as much uh, uh, of this goodies, uh, of this iron or metal, uh, and bring that back. <coughs> Stack that up right there. How's this guy looking? He's looking good. 
guys. Uh oh, he's almost out of battery. All right, hold on. I gotta get him over here to charge up. Now, actually, why he's charging, by the way, notice that uh, actually this one loses power um, because it's only five power. You gotta have at least minimum five power. You gotta have a large solar panel uh, to utilize it in the very beginning. Now, as you go through the game, by the way, you will progress, obviously, um, from uh, Sector large scanned. solar panels to wind turbines because then you'll have the ability to produce uh, those, uh, uh, those machine parts and more advanced parts. Uh, and then eventually, of course, I will go to Sterling Generator, which are really, really awesome. But of course, you got to have the ability to produce the stuff that allows you to repair it. Because if you're putting stuff down that you can't repair or that you just run out of resources, well, then you can, of course, call more resources in if you need to, uh, if that's how you're playing. But I'm not playing that way. I'm playing where I'm not going to call in any resources. I'm going to use the resources that I find. Uh, and how are we looking over here? Look at this. We're, we're looking good. We're at Soul 13, which isn't too bad. Isn't too bad. Uh, and we've got that nice and cleared now. I did see a bunch of it over here by this guy. Uh, let's go over there. Let's get that going on. And again, this guy's all, all maxed out now. Let's go ahead and bring him back down a little bit so that uh, those guys can see. Now, notice how I move this guy down a little bit. That's so that they can see way up here. They Research can see the complete. And then they can bring the concrete down and put it here when they have nothing else to do. Then these ones from here will grab it from there and then, of course, bring it down the drone. So it's kind of like a supply line, right? So these guys bring it from there to here, and then these guys bring it from here to here. Uh, and that's almost done. That dome is almost ready to go. So we'll get that going on. Uh, and we've got a bunch of metal there. We just need to wait for that to finish. This guy's picking up more metal. And she said something about something. Didn't discover anything there. That's a bummer. And uh, basically, when I make some more machine parts, by the way, I will go through and I will uh, actually put some more antennas out uh, to make that scan a bit faster. But I'm I'm in a spot right now where I'm looking good. Looking good so far. Uh, extract to produce dust, so you're avoiding putting them near other buildings. Uh, seems like he knows everything about the game already. Well, I did get sector uh, scan. I did get uh, a preview copy uh, thanks to Paradox Interactive, and then I proceeded to play it a lot, <laughs> a lot. My uh, first stream of it was 12 hours long, and then I streamed it for 16 hours, and then I streamed it for 21 hours. Not all of the, those are separate streams, by the way. 12 hours, 16 hours, 21 hours. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm a little crazy. I'm a little crazy, but this is my most anticipated game uh, this year. This is my type of game. This is the type of game I really love. Uh, because I love the challenge, and this game is fairly hard, by the way. If you do get into this game, it is fairly hard uh, in the very beginning because it's very difficult to get your production up and running. And I'm going to show you how to do it uh, very, very quickly uh, with just one rocket. That's all I'm bringing, one rocket, that's it. Uh, of course, I'll bring a rocket full of people, but only one resource rocket. There they go. Look at that. They're building our dome already. Looking good. We're at Soul 14. Looking Okay. Once I get that dome done, uh, they're going to go ahead and start on all of this stuff over here. Now, I've got enough concrete for now, uh, so I can go ahead and go and pull this guy off of concrete duty over here. And I'm going to go ahead and bring him down. Bring him down. Come on. Get in there, little guy. Uh, bring him down to help out. Now, I want him to overlap the resources Milestone here. Milestone achieved. And we have an here. oxygen shortage. We have a water shortage. There we we go. have a power shortage. Oh, yeah. Uh, so now I've got them overlapping so they can see all the resources over here. Uh, and, of course, they can help out uh, building all of this. Now, again, I've spent a lot of time uh, playing the beginning over and over again uh, because it helps me go, okay, what is the key to getting this game going? Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run our power down here uh, kind of by itself. Uh, and we're going to go Sector ahead and start scanned. by building a kind of a big power area. Again, we need to make sure that we don't go too far, right? That we're outside because we're using this as a drone hub at the very beginning. Uh, so we want to make sure that we didn't go out there. By the way, I saw a uh, really cool, uh, uh, cool uh, little spoiler though. Uh, really cool uh, research <clears throat> uh, way down here. A uh, a breakthrough research that actually makes it where you don't have to. Uh, you instantly make power lines. Hmm, I, I hope I get it in this playthrough. Uh, but that changes every time. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and put our power along this edge. We're going to go put one, two, three, four, five, six on that side. And then same thing over here. One, notice I'm rotating it. Three, four, five, six. Now I like to start with about 12. Uh, 12 is a good amount. Notice I did not put a battery in yet. That's okay. We're not in any hurry. We're not it. We don't even have our settlers yet. We're okay. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and start building out our very first living quarters. Now, where do I want to put the living quarters? Because it actually does matter where you put stuff, you know, the distance that they walk and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, I like to put it up here on this side because this is where I'm going to land uh, my other uh, one on this side so they can run straight in. Now, what other things am I going to build? Well, I'm going to build just a bare minimum they need to be happy enough to have a child, right? But first, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So this is going to take 10 concrete. And I've got plenty of concrete uh, from uh, what we were doing earlier right here. We've got 24 and 2, so that's about 26 right there. And we've kind of stopped our collecting of it, but that's okay. It'll still keep going, by the way. It'll still keep going even if you don't have any drones there. Uh, but eventually what will happen is you will need to maintenance this stuff, right? And this will go off. So I will definitely need to bring my drones back that way eventually. Uh, but right now I want to go ahead and fill out the power. And we've got this side all filled out now. Very nice. Now that's going to start burning my uh, machine Sector parts. scanned. So Anomaly I don't want to do found. that too much. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and see how we're looking on that water. Starting to fill that water up. Let's go ahead and zoom in on our air. How's that doing? That's just getting started as well. So what this is going to do is it's going to uh, create a backlog uh, of stuff. But of course, it needs some power right now. The reason why it needs some power is because this is not enough to power it right this moment, right? It can only power it during the daytime because I'm using solar. Now, again, I'm going to use only one uh, resource only. <clears throat> so uh, we're going to keep on going here. Now, some of the other things that I want to build in here. How are we looking on this? We've got to get done with this first, and then I'm going to work on that. Uh, and I'll actually turn the dome off for right now. Uh, this way it's not using the power during the day uh, and then the rest of the stuff can use the power So what it's going to do is during the day It's going to grab the water grab the air and run it and back put it into a backlog right here And then it's going to save that backlog of it same thing here with the power It's going to start doing the power once all the power things are set up Cable uh, fault reported uh Oh cable fault uh, Once it gets the power uh, up and running uh, then we'll be good to go and this stuff's all built out over there. So let's go ahead and bring this guy. Over here on this side. Now, the reason why I'm going to bring him on this side is so that he'll have access to this and also see the resources here. So the drones that are connected to the RC rover will come down and do that. So that's why I do have a lot about this game. Now, by the way, I do not look on wikis. I don't uh, watch videos. I don't do any of that stuff. I like to play it the first time through not knowing anything. So I discover stuff as I go along. I find that to be part of the, part of the fun uh, to do that. So everything that I've learned, I've learned just by playing the game. Uh, and that's how I like to play. I don't like to cheat. don't like to shortcut. I don't use third-party mods typically, that kind of stuff. Uh, I play totally legit. Because then it challenges me to play it. And now I want to get my money's worth, right? Because that's what you really want to get out of any game. Is you want to get your money's worth plus more, right? You want to get that money and then the more money out of it, right? So you feel like you got Sector scan. not only what you paid, but you got above and beyond. Alpha Wolf, thank you so much for the host, everybody. Thank you for that love today. Uh, thank you, Dax, earlier for the host as well as Lord Winter. Getting, that, uh, getting those kids cats for the host. If you are enjoying the stream, by the way, uh, consider hitting that follow button uh, right up there at the top. If you do have Amazon Prime, it is free uh, to subscribe to my channel. So feel free to go up there and check out that subscribe button and uh, drop some love on the channel. You guys are the reason why I keep going. You guys are the reason why this stream keeps it going. Uh, all right, so let's keep that going there. How are we looking over here? This guy is full, so let's go ahead and pull him back. Oh, we got some resource to do. Uh, you gotta, you got to be micromanaging uh, basically everything all the time. All the time. Let's go ahead and pull this guy back so he can uh, charge up first. Uh, got to be micromanaging stuff all the time, right? You're building, you're uh, backlogging, you're uh, building inside the dome, right? We have a power up. shortage. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, and you're doing a constant amount of stuff constantly. But, of course, you can always hit the space bar to pause, uh, which you can see right down there. Uh, the pause button comes up. You can queue up a bunch of stuff and then keep going. I like to just let it run because I've only got so much time uh, to play today. So I like to let it run so we can uh, get further into the game. Now, again, I since I've got billions of dollars, I could just cheat and shortcut and uh, say, oh, well, psh, I'm just going to bring in 10,000 10, tons of resources uh, to make it easy mode. Uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. I would rather uh, I would rather try the tough stuff. Try the tough stuff, and then allows me to play in any Sector mode on scanned. any level uh, with no problem. Vehicle battery low. Uh oh, which one's low? RC Rover. Which one's low? That one's get a little low. Let's get over here to charge up. Plenty of power to charge it up. Yeah, this guy's a little low. All right, let's go back. Again, if you notice, I'm double-clicking here, which allows me to jump to that particular area. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, and again, this is my first playthrough of the release version. I did get a preview version from, uh, from Paradox, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, they let me play it early before anybody else, uh, except for some, a few streamers who got it as well. Uh, but very, very fun. Very, very fun. So I try to keep my, uh, all my stuff away out here. Uh, so that it has lots of room uh, for this. So it does cause dust too, but it really, dust is not that big of a problem. I mean, it's a little bit of a problem. It does cause maintenance and that kind of stuff. But the thing that really is a problem is when you crowd it too much and then it doesn't have room for storage for all of this rock, and then you've got to create your own separate rock storage, which burns into your resources. All right, oh, there we go. Hold on, we got it going on. All right, now, the second I get that built, that's when I bring my rocket in. So let's go in and let's go ahead and look at our passengers. We've got 174 people we can choose from. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose the age group here. Now, youth actually can work as well. So I'm going to say youth, uh, age, adult, no middle-aged peeps right now. Uh, and we're going to go back. And then we go specialization. We're going to go ahead and turn all of them off uh, except for scientists. Oh, I got 24 scientists. Ooh, let's go with that for now. It uh, doesn't matter if they're male. Of course, I want a little split between male and female, so they have some children. Uh, oh, uh, that was passenger. Uh, it luckily, it remembers what to do. Perks, I'll go ahead and turn all the perks on. And flaws, I will turn all the flaws off. And also all the quirks off as well. Now, the reason why I do that in the very beginning is because I have my, my choice of who I want to bring, right? So I can bring nobody with no flaws. You want to, I mean, you got 264 people to choose from. So you can start with, with your best people. You want to bring your best people in at the very beginning, right? So I've got scientists. I can also bring in some engineers, uh, which is actually who I want more. I, want, I really want the engineers more than I want scientists. Uh, I can also bring in some other people, maybe uh, a few medics, uh, so they can help out, <clears throat> maybe some geologists, so they can uh, make it where uh, they can do some uh, mining, which is what I'm going to need. I'm going to need them to mine uh, metal and also mine uh, a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of rare materials so I can make electronics. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start with that. Engineers, uh, medics, uh, to keep my people from going crazy. Uh, and then geologists, that's going to allow me between 14 <coughs> right there. And I've got no flaws and no quirks, which is awesome. Awesome. Uh, and then whatever specialization or whatever perks. Now, I could go through and eliminate more people if I want, right? If I, I say, well, you know, I don't want them to be a saint, I could take that person out, and I could really get down into it. Um, probably uh, don't want gamer right now because otherwise he's going to want gaming. Now, gaming requires electronics, right? So I'm going to turn gamer actually off because I don't want anybody who requires electronics because electronics is one of the hardest things to make early in the game. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. That's going to give us uh, matching colonists 18. Uh, and rock capacity is going to be 12. Let's go ahead and launch. All right. Our peeps are now on the way. Now, while they're on the way, I'm going to go ahead and make uh, what I call some base stuff. Now, the first thing I like to make, of course, is the nursery uh, for the babies. Hopefully, they're going to have. Uh, and then, of course, uh, some basic stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put the grocer on this side because this is where I'm going to bring the food in. I'm going to go ahead and put a diner in. 
again, to keep your people happy, they've got to have a certain amount of stuff, right? You know, a place to eat, a place to dine, a place to shop, all of that kind of cool stuff. And also a place to relax and take it easy. So I'm going to go ahead and put a garden in. Uh, let's put it right here at the nice front, uh, like so. Uh, so we put a grocer in, uh, we put a, uh, a diner in and all that. Now we also need an infirmary uh, to keep them from going nuts. Uh, so we're going to do that. And that's about it. That's all you really need uh, for actually for a whole bunch of people that I'm going to have in here eventually. All right. We so have a power way. shortage. Now I was going to keep saying it has a power shortage and whatnot um, because uh, I don't want to uh, burn up. Uh, all of my resources. Now, right now, over here on the right side, I've got five polymers, nine electronics, and nine machine parts. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and let that get started. And I'm going to go ahead and start in the next power cycle. I'm going to go ahead and start putting down my power uh, backups. Now, for each dome, it takes uh, typically uh, two or three of these power accumulators uh, for them to actually uh, be able to power it during the nighttime. Uh, when you start doing your all of your uh, uh, industrial stuff, you start doing all your machine uh, stuff, you start doing this and this and this, well, then you're going to need another scanned. one. You're gonna need a third one uh, so that it will charge them up during the day and then, of course, expand them during the nighttime. <coughs> and that's what I do very early on. Later on, I will start using wind, and then eventually, of course, I will be using uh, the more advanced Sterling generator later on. Later on! Uh, kids, I pre-ordered this game and got the Slayer's Dome skin. I used it once and seems to have disappeared from my game. Anyone else have this problem on PS4? I have not seen that, but I would send in a ticket. I would send in a ticket and let them know. Uh, let me uh, refresh my chat. Hey, Calamal, what's up? Thanks for hanging out, everybody. As you see, I'm, I get very focused in this particular game. Uh, if you uh, do have a question or comment for me, my name is Kismet. You can put Kiz or Kismet in the chat. It'll highlight in red. I know you're talking directly to me. Uh, as well as you can, uh, if I missed it for any reason, just throw it in there again. Uh, now, don't forget also uh, to go ahead and follow that tweet so you guys, of course, get those kids caps for con our contests and giveaways. You never know, I might give this game away. You never know. We'll see. We'll see. I give away a lot of games here on the stream, I'm giving away literally thousands of dollars worth of games, hundreds and hundreds of games here, including a lot of uh, epic games like Seven Days to Die, Fallout 4, Far Cry, Civilization, uh, City Skylines, you name it. We've been giving it away, those AAA games up in here. AAA games for you guys for hanging out and being awesome. And it gives you an advantage uh, if you do have those kids caps, because, of course, you can bet a much more uh, than other people can, because I do like to reward people who hang out in the street five often. All right, so we got that build. This guy doesn't need to hang around here anymore. We're going to go ahead and send him back up here. Research complete. We have a power shortage. No worries. All right, so this right here needs some polymers and some concrete. Uh, right now, I don't have any concrete to utilize because I use it for something else. So I need to bring this guy up here so he can access this a little bit higher. A little bit higher. A little bit higher. A little bit. There we go. Uh, Anomaly found. A little bit less. There we go. Uh, so now this guy can reach, of course, all of these resources so that he can repair up here. Uh, they can also bring it down here to uh, where all the concrete goes. The second that one puts that there, look at this drone over here. See? It's, it's so cool how it does that. And then this one kicks in. We'll grab the concrete and then run that concrete down to start making all of this other stuff uh, down here. So you kind of constantly have to kind of switch sometimes, especially if your resources are very spread out like my concrete is very spread out from the rest of my uh, my good stuff down here. <coughs> now, they're here right now, uh, my peeps, but uh, they can actually stay in orbit another 109 hours, uh, which is a lot of time, uh, so that all of this stuff will get built up first because uh, I want them to hit the ground running uh, and make sure I get all that built up. Uh, also, I want to go ahead and make sure that I have both of these built uh, before they actually come in. I want to make sure I've got some backlog of water, which I do. How's our air looking? Yeah, we got a bit of backlog of the air as well. Uh, and then what I will do is actually start running my dome and actually, actually the power and water and air 24-7. That'll, that'll continually run 24-7. 
Now, if you'll notice, this will be completely autonomous up here. It's not going to be tied in my main power grid. That's just going to run during the day, and at nighttime, it will stop. Uh, and let's see. We got RC Explorer. We could be exploring out here. Let's get that going. How are we looking over here? This guy's good. Give himself some more of that action. And again, I constantly bounce back and forth. Now, I also double-click on uh, the, the uh, RC Rover quite often so that it jumps me back to my kind of home base. Uh, which you can actually tag this, by the way. You can actually put this in your bar here. We uh, have a power you... shortage. Yep. We got a power shortage. There we go. Now, if you've never seen this game before, this is Surviving Mars. Incredibly great game. Just came out about a week or so ago. Uh, I definitely, definitely uh, suggest it. Kismet, is it a finished game? Sector scan. This is Select a sector to scan. Of the game. I've actually removed, uh, removed the pre-release. Uh, and actually, this has some uh, cool new features uh, that I really like. Oh, we got some smart home. We're going to get that uh, high rise eventually. We got over here uh, one billion dollars. Uh, oh, engineers and geologists. What's this? Scientists and botanists. I need engineers and geologists. Uh, <clears throat> uh, they actually added the ability to. Oh, and of course, I failed at it. Uh, to queue up more uh, like this, because normally it would be just four in the pre-release version, but you can actually do up to nine uh, scan areas. Of course, you don't want to be like me and uh, get sidetracked and forget to keep that going. Same thing with your resources or your <clears throat> research. Your research should be going all the time. Your map should be going all the time. Uh, you should always be scanning all the time <clears throat> to get that going. Now, what I'm trying to do right now is just simply build up enough resources uh, to get this going, I'm going to go ahead and high prioritize these uh, right here. And again, we need that concrete. So we need them to bring the concrete down uh, from up here. And Anomaly here. analyzed. And these guys are going to grab it from up there. And they're going to run it down and get this power going. Now, again, I'm in no hurry uh, because I want to make sure that my people from the very beginning are happy. So they start to have a child. Now, if they have a child early then it actually cuts down that time. So normally it takes like 10 days uh, before you can bring in any more colonists. But if they have a child, sometimes you can cut it down to five days uh, and boom, you can go straight to it. <clears throat> now right now, I actually don't need this dome stuff to be running. So I go ahead and turn this stuff off for right now. Now the reason why I want to do that is uh, so that uh, my batteries will charge up much faster uh, during the day. Oh, there they go. Uh, they'll charge up much faster during the day because I don't really need that stuff on. Of course, the hardest thing to remember is to turn that on later. Now, there we go. I've got a second one going. Now, I've got to watch out because what's going to happen is I'm going to run out of polymers. Now, I don't want to run out of polymers. I want them to be able to build polymers, but I need metal to do polymers. Uh, and, of course, I need also uh, some fuel. So I need to be able to uh, make a fuel depot. So before I go and I make anything else, I need to uh, be jumping straight to the fuel depot, fuel refinery here. Now, again, this is going to take uh, machine parts to uh, to run. <clears throat> so I want to make sure that uh, I go over here and I tie this into everything like so. Uh, there we go. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and make a, speaking of a fuel thing, I'm going to go ahead and make a fuel depot. Uh, oh, I think I'll put it on this side. The reason why I'm going to put it on this side is so that it uh, will take the fuel from over here, run it to here, then it will fuel up my uh, ships as well as uh, fuel up uh, my polymer factory, which I'll eventually I'll put there. All right, looking good. Uh, I just need this one more thing done here. We've got the power here. What are we waiting on? More concrete. More concrete. There we go. Now, I won't put a battery over there for now. i uh, only run that during the day. Uh, and there we go. All right, running that to there to there. How are we looking out here? This guy's full. Let's bring him back. Get that metal. And we'll have him drop it right here. So there we go. Now, again, the, the goal of what we're doing is uh, to start the game with only one resource rocket. If I can do that, which I have done it before, uh, if I can do that, uh, then I don't need any other resources, and I can do it on any mode. Whether it's the hardest mode in the game, uh, I could go ahead and start 
uh, as long as I have enough resources to uh, get that initial start going. <coughs> uh, all right. Charge that guy up. Why is there? Uh, we've got lots and lots of this. Now, by the way, the way to speed this up, uh, if you want, up here, is you can go ahead and bring this guy up here, and you can have him pick up all the concrete. So this will go a bit faster. So he can come up here, grab all that concrete, go over here, grab all this concrete. There you go. Now your drones don't have to do it. Then we'll run this all the way down here. While he's running down there, I'll go ahead and make a concrete depot right there. And I'm going to go ahead and drop that into there. And now they don't have to walk as far. They don't have to run all the way up here to get the resources because they can run now straight over here to get the resources. It'll go much faster. Uh, and I want to go ahead and turn this off so it doesn't accidentally... I turn that off on all my ships, uh, which is uh, putting precious metals on there. I don't want it to... I don't want it to do my precious metals because I want to use those uh, for uh, <clears throat> for uh, how's my peeps doing? 51 hours. Uh, I want to use those for uh, making electronics. All right, there we go. We've got them all built. How's it looking? Both our powers are full. Let's go ahead and turn all the stuff on. That's already on. Sector scanned. And that's on. All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to watch our cycles uh, right now, uh, which is this right here, your grid resources. Uh, how much power are you producing right now? Well, none because it's nighttime because I'm using solar panels. But I have 301 stored up, and I'm using minus 35 uh, total to run everything at nighttime, which isn't too bad because uh, you got to think it's got to run for so many hours, right? So say research complete. Say nighttime is five hours. Well, that's five times thirty-five, uh, and then of course you should have that stored up. But look at that—I have plenty stored up. Two hundred and one uh, by the day. By the time day came around again, uh, that's more than enough uh, power to run that during the nighttime, and of course run all of my other stuff over here, including my uh, uh, fuel production, uh, my air, and uh, my water. And now we're ready to bring our peeps in. So let's drop them in right over here sneak him in there let's sneak him in right there all right our peeps are going to come in they're going to land there now also what it's going to happen is uh they're going to have a bunch of food full of hope and determination milestone achieved they're going to have a bunch of food on there. New colonists have arrived. Now, this guy's got that iron. I'm going to go ahead and bring him back. And I'm going to help him uh, kind of speed this along a little bit. Uh, and again, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to turn this off. Uh, I'm going to speed this, uh, the unloading of this along the way. Now, notice I don't have any food production. The reason why I don't have any food production is because the, the actual rockets come with a lot of food. Uh, and that will last for a while. But eventually, I will need to get food production going. Uh, so I'm going to have this guy go right up here, grab the food. <coughs> like so. There we go. And then say go ahead and offload it here. There anomaly we go. found. Pipe leak reported. Oh, another anomaly found. Nice, nice. Uh, where's my little guy? How's he looking? He's looking good. I think he can make it. Go get it. All right, so that one is now taking the food out of there, and then I also need to take care of this metal he's got on him. Drop that metal off. And then again, so you can use your rover here to speed up the unloading of stuff uh, from your ship, which is what you should do with the food, because the food does take a while, especially when you don't have a lot of drones in the beginning, like me, uh, where I go very slim on the drone. Because eventually I can make this right here, which is the drone, uh, the drone assembler. But I need to get all my other stuff going first. All right. So while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and now start on uh, machine parts. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and put in our machine parts factory right here. And our machine parts factory is only going to run during the day. Uh, and it's going to give something for all these people to do, right? They're going to go ahead and start to work on that. 
Uh, now, also over here, uh, uh, also over here, uh, we want to go ahead and do our metal extractor. And we want to make sure that we give it a, enough room uh, that it is going to uh, say somewhere in there. Uh, so that I have enough room to also do the rare mineral extractor. And again, I don't want them too close because uh, they won't have enough uh, room. And I'll be overlapping. See, they're still within the uh, thing here. Uh, I'll be overlapping this, of course, with another dome over there eventually. All right, so we've got that going. Now, these are going to need uh, power. And we've got the power grid running right here. But actually, I'm going to run it straight off the dome here like that. And then I'm going to go ahead. Do I want to change that way or put it in its own? I'm going to put in its own little power straight off the dome. There we go. All right. Now, I did get the question, Kismet, how do you delete these once they are made? I did learn that you can actually use this right here. Now, I don't know why they did this and not just so you can click on it and then get rid of it, right? Like, I can get rid of it if, if I'm scanned. just making it, right? If, I, if, if Before it's made, I can get rid of it. But once it's made, you can't actually click on it, which is weird, because I think you should be able to click on it and then be able to, of course, get rid of it, right? Same thing with pipes, right? You can't just click on the pipe and get rid of it. But uh, you can utilize uh, this, this salvage thing here, the salvage button, and then you can go ahead and click on it, and it would take that power line out uh, and salvage that power line. So if you do have power lines or pipes Research you want, complete. you can Anomaly it, analyzed. Which is awesome. All right, so we got all our peeps in there, and right now we're on uh, uh, vehicle nine souls. battery we low. We have to go nine souls before we go. I'm gonna roll over. There we go. That's what we want to see right there at the bottom, uh, in green. Children will be born. The dome is comfortable enough. Now notice how I, this is all I've got, right? Just a little bit, right? I've got their food. I've got uh, an infirmary. I've got uh, a nursery. So when their children are born, they'll go in there, uh, and all of that, nice and set. <laughs> Uh, set and running. I'm going to go ahead and try to pull all the power out of here. I'm not getting rid of that yet until I have a drone area, but this one I can get rid of. There we go. Did we get it all? I think we did. All right. Now, you don't want that guy doing that too much, though. You don't want to spend too much time doing that. You want him off looking uh, for the sweet metal. Over here. All right, he's gonna go run and do that. How are we looking out here? That one did that one. We still got that going. Oh, we got one resources are low. Yep, see, I'm running low on machine parts, and that's why I got to get my machine parts going. How are we looking? All right, that's up and running. Now we've got a shift. Right, we've got a day shift. We've got engineers which is what I need. And so I've got three engineers in there, just exactly uh, the type of peeps that I need. All right, what are we researching? This one. And then we're going to research high rises. And let's see what else. Drone co battery capacity, drone hub. I don't need any of that right now. Marshall University trained scientists, botanists. You know what? I've, I've never used this before. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that one in this playthrough at some point, but it takes 20 uh, electronics right now, and I don't want to burn 20 electronics. Uh, I can also uh, do this kind of stuff, uh, electronics factory and stuff like that, but nah, I've already got one. I've already got one. I can go ahead and utilize it here in a bit. Uh, let's see, this stuff, maybe this one, that one eventually. Close that. All right. So now I've got to get my machine parts going. So, of course, I have the ability to repair the stuff that takes machine parts. Like this takes polymers. And uh, machine parts. Uh, this right here takes machine parts. Uh, this takes machine parts to repair. So I actually find it's better to have machine parts going first uh, better than anything else. Uh, and then once we get that going, and now that we've discovered the ability to uh, produce polymer factory... Uh, we can do that. Now, it consumes water, power, and uh, has uh, a maintenance cost of those uh, machine parts. 
So we're going to go ahead and uh, start this going, and we're going to go ahead and just try to sneak it over here. Let's see. Maybe this way. Get it all lined up here. Sector scanned. There we go. Now I put it right there so that I could just go ahead and nice, easily uh, run this across here. And then out to there. And then that's going to tie in uh, to this, which is going to tie in, of course, to the water. Oh, our water is all at max. If our water, if I see the water's at maximum, then I'm like, oh, I need to add another water tower. Because, of course, you want to backlog as much resources as you can. I'm looking on air. Not quite full, but looking good. Looking good. All right. Now you're going to see during the day uh, that they're going to be working in the polymer, uh, in the uh, machine parts factory. They're producing 2.8 right now in there, which is awesome because I'm now at one, so I don't have any. Uh, I can, of course, pull in a rocket if I wanted to do resources, but nah, nah. I would, more, Research I would, complete. Much, rather, I would much rather do it without, <clears throat> without having to do that. Uh, all right. And we're going to build our polymer factory now. Uh, we need concrete, metal. And that we got plenty of metal. Are we looking on concrete here? We got 11. This takes 10, so we're perfect there. Uh, and then we need five machine parts, and <coughs> we're gonna need to make those eventually. <coughs> All right, how are we looking? Oh, what do people need? Drinking. Well, we'll see how it goes. Oh, there we go. It's back now. It's back now. So sometimes it bounces back and forth uh, on that. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and let this keep going. we got here concrete, machine parts, machine parts, machine parts. There we go. Okay, so this we can go ahead. I think I'm going to prioritize this here to get the metal going. This is for electronics. So we'll get that going here in a bit. <clears throat> Again, we're getting 2.8 right now. And then also, uh, kind of foreshadowing uh, a little bit here, is we're going to go ahead and start building a second one of those. Because we're going to bring, the second we can bring more people in, we need to bring them in right away. Um, because it's going to allow me to make more machine parts. Which, of course, is going to allow me to build this stuff. And then if I can build that stuff, then, of course, I can have those people working in those things. Uh, and so on. <coughs> and to make machine parts, I need metal. So... I've got to have the metal. But of course, to repair the metal thing, I need the machine parts. So it's a catch-22 uh, you can get yourself into, which you don't want to do. Now, also to repair the machine parts factory, I need electronics. So I got to make sure that I have enough room uh, to also do electronics in here as well, uh, which, I will, which I will do eventually. But I don't put stuff down until the very second that I actually uh, want to start doing it. There we go. We've got a shift over here for metal. Now we don't have to be so concerned about metal as much, but I'm still going to be out here collecting it as much as I can uh, from every single place I can find. There's some right here. Let's go get that. No, actually, let's, let's bring him back because he's kind of low power. Let's bring him back. get charged up. I think he did. I think we're going to go way out here. Go get it. All right. Now, it's a, it's a constant balance to try to keep everything going. Um, but this is how you do it with just the minimal amount of resources. Woo, look at that power. That power just made it. Woo, that was close. Look at that. Power production, power demand, 74. Now, I've got to have a power surplus. Uh, I'm going to go and pause the game. I've got to have a power surplus for it to uh, to actually to store the power up. If I don't have a power surplus, then I'm going to be in trouble. So right now, I'm going to need to uh, actually see where my distance is here, right here. Uh, right now, I'm going to need to start creating uh, some more power along here. Now, if you don't leave a gap, by the way, your vehicles cannot move between here. So it's good to leave a gap as well uh, as you go. Let's go ahead and go to there. 
Let's see, is that the edge? No, one more. Right there is the edge. Uh, and again, we'll go ahead and uh, power this up a bit more. Now, I could go to... Uh, go ahead and leave a gap. Uh, I could go through and... Uh, the same way. That. Uh, I could go through and start using windmills, uh, but I will start doing that when I start doing my second dome. Right here. I'm mean, like, Kismet, dang, you're making a whole lot, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, and we're going to go ahead and create a uh, line like this and something along this line. Now, I'm actually going to put down uh, some solar this way. Like, damn, Kismet, that's a lot of power, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The funny irony is, uh, eventually I'm going to get rid of all of it. Be like, why are you going to get rid of it, Kismet? Because I'm going to use something better. Use something more better. Actually, I'm just going to run that straight back. So we have two redundant lines. Notice that these, these here will be on a second uh, redundant line. Uh, and you can create lots of nice redundant lines so that it circles back. As long as you've got kind of a pathway like this, uh, your cars can make it through. Unless you have pipes there, then, it, then they can't. But your cars can make it through the middle here and also use that as a charging area. All right, so we're going to get that going because we have a bunch of metal. So we can utilize that. They're going to go ahead and start grabbing all of the stuff, bringing that down there eventually. Uh, and let's go ahead and see how our guys are doing up here. We've got plenty. Okay, it's just not quite up high enough. Actually, let's pull him out of there. Oh, ran out of power. Sector scanned. Oh, that dude ran out of power. Uh, that's interesting. I just noticed that when he ran out of power, all the drones left him. All the drones left from there, and they went back to here, which is kind of cool. I just learned that you can actually clear that guy's drones out. Yeah, now he has zero drones. Interesting. Interesting. Well, you go charge up, too. All right. So he ran out of power, and the drones then left from him, and then is Anomaly now part analyzed. of the actual ships itself. Interesting. But this ship is about to leave anyway. Oh, I got the anomaly. Oh, there she is. Look at that Sterling generator. Oh, I will get that eventually. All right, what do we need? We need uh, hotel first, or apartments first. We don't need any of that. Definitely going to need the drone hub eventually. Go ahead and do that one. This one. All right. Keep that going. Uh, thank you so much to Missing uh, for dropping the dragon hammer, crushing that follow button, becoming part of the Kismet Army. Welcome, welcome. Feel free to say hello in the chat. Uh, appreciate you hanging out here today. And thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, let's see, uh, iCraft Kids, what's the best strategy to get the 40 techs researched by Soul 100? Do the cheap ones. Do the cheap ones, uh, all the cheap ones. If you just did just the cheap ones, even if you just had the base, right, uh, you can do it by day 100. Uh, I just start researching in the very beginning. When it starts getting close, that's when you can actually put a research lab down and put other stuff down uh, to try to speed it along. But just basically research all the low-end stuff, which is good anyway, because then, of course, it pushes forward the rest of your tech over there, uh, which does help you a lot. And actually, this stuff here in the beginning is actually fairly good. Like, this is, you know, plus 10% uh, to your scientists and botanists. But I always get the ones that give me a boost, right? Like, I got the boost for the 100, and I got a boost for another 100 from sponsors. Uh, I, if I see those, if those appear in my options, I will do those first, because they affect the whole rest of the game. Right, it's kind of like uh, in Fallout 4 when you choose the uh, the ammo perk. Right, well, if you do it right at the very beginning, of course, you're going to get more ammo throughout the entire rest of the game. So those ones are the ones you want to hit very, very early on. Uh, now, of course, you can also use outsourcing and stuff like that if you want to burn your cash and all that kind of stuff. But I try to I try to play without doing any of that uh, because I try to make it extra difficult, <laughs> extra difficult to learn. How Research to make that work. complete. All right, now my power is gonna is starting to have a problem. 
because uh, my power grid is getting are really low. low. See, my power grid's getting really low, and I'm about to lose power, it looks like. Yeah, I've got two more rounds. I'm going to lose power. Let's see how close. Oh, yeah. What time is it? Hour four. We have a power. Our colonists are suffering from hypothermia. So yeah, it's five. And six. So it's just quite not enough, right? And you're like, well, Kismet, you're adding a whole bunch more solar cells, so that should be fine. No, it's not fine. Because what happens is these powers drain at a certain speed, right? They drain a certain speed during the nighttime. And so you're not going to have enough uh, of the power. You're going to have enough power to actually run off the generators, meaning that they can't sustain your dome and all of your factories during, uh, during the nighttime. Uh, and right now, look, you can't even sustain it right there. So I'm going to actually turn this off. So I've got to have this first, right? You've got to set your priorities. What's most important? Uh, right now, it is my, uh, my, my uh, factory to produce my machine parts. And once I start to catch up on my machine parts, I'll be good because then I can start putting some machine parts into my polymer factory and start getting that going. All right, here comes my rare metal. Uh, do we get anybody born yet? Come on. Be born already. And we need more concrete there uh, as well. And how's my guy doing? What's he doing? He's up here charging up. And let's run him down. Grab all this concrete. I love this little rover. I think this is probably one of the most useful things you can do. Is to use your rover to speed this along instead of using drones. I'm going to bring him down. Drop all that right there. And then now it's nice and close to where it needs to be. And look, now they've only got to go that far to bring that uh, those particular resources there. Now I feel like they're going to have a baby here in a second. Uh, and then we'd be good to go. All right, this one is full. Nothing needs out of there. Now what's going to happen is uh, when Milestone that one leaves, achieved. When that one leaves, those drones are going to get off of that guy, go on to here, or go into here. So two drones went into my ship, and two drones went back into my little RC rover here, uh, which I can utilize to try to get this stuff down here at the bottom. There we go. Just a, little bit up, a little bit higher. There we go. All right, looking good. Uh, now I have this off right now. I'm going to turn that back on. There we go. So we're producing For a little... For the first time... A human has been born on Mars. There it's we go. truly a unique miracle. Bam. All right, so there we go. So we have our child born. Now, the second that child's born, your 10 days is over. So I just saved myself four days uh, because I made it nice and comfortable in the dome for them. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and pull some more people in. Uh, let's go ahead and get another passenger rocket. How many people do I have available? Two available currently with uh, the stuff that I've chosen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, for some scientists here, open up for some botanists. Uh, let's see, it gives us five. How about with no specialization? All right, that gives us 11. 11, we'll just go with that. Uh, and then now we're going to have to start getting into some flaws, right? Uh, let's go ahead and say loner. There we go. Another going to give us 12. Yep, that'll give us 12. Uh, and we'll go ahead and launch. I was going to say, Kismet, wait a minute, you don't have a place for him to stay? Too bad, launch it anyway. Because my thing's being built right now, uh, and by the time it gets here, uh, it will be built. It will be built. Uh, that one's on back to its way to Earth. And again, notice how I'm just using this Sector as a drone scanned. hub. I don't need to actually have a drone hub itself. All right, these need to be repaired. So I'm going to go ahead and take my little guy, run him up to there, and he will hopefully repair all of that. All right, so we've got this going. We've got our rare metals going. So we're going to go ahead and uh, make uh, some rare metals. And we're going to go ahead and just store it right there. <clears throat> now it's out of power again, so we need to get our drones busy, busy over here doing this. But of course, I don't have any polymers uh, to build this yet, and I don't have polymers to upkeep this. So these are this is going to deteriorate to a point where I don't have enough. 
if I don't start getting this going as quickly as possible. Let me go ahead and prioritize that, and I'm gonna prioritize this, which means that more people are gonna start popping in here uh, and utilizing this so that I can make this, which is allowing me to make polymers, which allows me to repair this stuff, right? Now, the thing you really don't want to go off is your water and your air. That you never wanna go off. Your power, if it goes off, oh well, they're cold, they'll be fine, right? Usually, they, they might go crazy, but they'll be fine. But if you if you don't have enough air and you don't have enough water, we you have really a power fall. shortage. Oh, and there goes our power. Now this needs to be repaired, and I don't have any polymers to do so. So again, I need uh, five of this to do that. Again, we're just going to have to tough it out during the nighttime. See, they're cold in their house. Such is the way it goes. <coughs> Such is the way it goes. And I prioritize this now. So now I've got five people in there, and we've got our other people on the way. So they're gonna be able to help out uh, with that as well. Second they get here. Now we're looking on time. Oh, we're over time. We're past time. All right, we're gonna to try to put some peeps in here uh, and get this going and then go from there. We're gonna bring this down right in here again. Cable fault reported. All right, so we got our power back again. These guys are doing their thing. And our peeps are almost here. Again, the more peeps I have, the faster my production will go. Land it out there. Lots of fuel. When this ship comes down, I'll make sure to tell it not to take any of my rare resources. And there goes my peeps, all right. New colonists have arrived. Create a second shift. For this, now I'm producing 6.8 of those, which is awesome. How are we looking on electronics? Good. Now we're producing machine parts, because the machine parts you actually want to produce first. Uh, and then, now there we go, now it's starting to build up my polymer factory. And once my polymer factory kicks in, I will then be able to recover from my power problem I'm having right now. So I'm gonna set the polymer factory as the most important thing. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back down to two. I'm gonna go ahead and put that as one work shift. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this as the priority. And that's gonna give me 2.4. Let's do two shifts. Let's go ahead and put that on two shifts. There we go. Now I'm gonna produce 3.9. Uh, because right now, machine parts, I mean, I'm still producing them. I'm still producing one. And if we go in and we roll over this, it'll tell us how much we're producing of each thing. Uh, same thing with our advanced resources. We have resources. a power shortage. Right now we're producing two machine parts, uh, zero Research polymers, complete. and zero electronics. But we need to get that up very, very quickly. Uh, otherwise, basically, uh, my people are going to go insane. insane resources in are low. Brain. I know, lady. <clears throat> Prioritize that one for fixing. And they're going to take that one polymer that just got made and they'll hopefully run it and utilize it right there. And again, we'll let it run a little bit. Okay, it's the daytime. Sector scanned. Now they're on their first shift. Uh, so for each shift, up oh, there we go. Uh, for each shift, it's gonna produce about 3.2, or 3.1, about half. And then as the, as the polymers get made, it's gonna grab the polymers and put them various places. We'll go ahead and prioritize this. And this way, when I get my this one working, and all of these working, uh, then I should be good. Now, one of the problems I have right now is I don't have enough drones. I simply don't have enough drones uh, to keep this going. Now, I'm starting to get up into the higher stages here, but before I can do this and before I can do everything else, I need all of my production working. Uh, oh, this is nice here. Uh, storage is, is bigger. 
But if you'll notice that I'm not going to be doing the higher end ones first. I'm going to clear all these lower end ones first for the specific reason of trying to get the 40 done by 100. Uh, so I'm going to do all the lower end ones. Now, right now, of course, this is sitting here doing nothing. Uh, so we want to run out here, find this, and uh, get those resources. And we want to keep this going. I love the fact you can do more of those now. That's really cool. <coughs> Actually, let's, let's go up. Let's go up first. <coughs> <coughs> All right. Hey, Vampiris, what's up? This is a lit game. It is totally a lit game. I love this game. It is incredibly fun uh, to play. Uh, if you are really good at balancing resources, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, and I'm balancing, you know, i got a couple people working here, a couple people working there. I got a couple people working in there, and I got a lot of people working in here because I need polymers. And I'll shift my resources based on what's really, really low, right? Uh, and right now, I'm I'm just consuming one polymer, right? But, uh, but I use a lot of polymers uh, to keep my batteries going. Now, eventually, again, I will start using, when I'm producing enough uh, machine parts, where I will start using uh, the... Uh, uh, the windmills and plus i also got a uh, perk that allows 33 percent more power so they actually produce more power though the cost of the repair is higher because it of course uses machine parts but of course if you are mining metal you can take metal turn to machine parts and of course machine humankind parts. might be on the verge of a new golden age right now i'm 13 and 40 which isn't too bad isn't too bad all right, I want to go ahead and get all these guys going down here. And let's see, once they've gotten all that done, what are we doing here? Oh, we're, we're taking out all of that. We're taking out all of that. All right. So now I'm running into a problem of I don't have enough uh, resources uh, to keep this going. So we got 10, 14. All right. Uh, I don't have enough resources to keep this going. Now, another thing I need to do is look at how many people I have, all right? How many people I have versus what I'm producing, right? Machine parts, I don't have to produce a whole lot of those, just a little bit, and eventually it'll catch up because I'm, I really am only uh, consuming maybe three of those uh, every so often. Um, but uh, polymers is something very important, and then, of course, electronics is very tough as well. So I'm gonna start building my electronics area. And I will have to go at some point here, everybody. So I'll start building my electronics area in here, like so. Uh, and then I've got to balance between my polymers, my machine parts, and my electronics. Sector scanned. Oh, speaking up. Speaking up. All right. So we're gonna let that run a little bit. Uh, and let's see how our guy's doing out here. Is he done? Yes, he's done. All right, we're gonna bring him back with that metal. This metal there? No. There's some right there. Grab that on the way back. Grab that on the way back. Uh, so we'll keep him going. Uh, let's see. These guys are already done doing that. This is storage space is full. Oh, this guy's just a little bit too far up. There we go. He's a little bit too far up, which is said storage space full, which means that uh, which he wasn't uh, able to run it down into there. Uh, all right. So we've got that going. Let's go ahead and take a look at our resource now. 143 looking good. Uh-oh, water shortage. Got a bit of a water shortage here, minus two. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's take a look at our water here. Oh, see, it's starting to cut into our water resources. Now, what we can do, actually, is to create another uh, water extractor. Uh, all right, over here. Again, you want to make sure you leave, uh, leave space. Actually, I want to make sure that's not outside my area there. Ooh, almost was. Uh, I want to put it up here. This way, uh, they can actually see it for maintenance. There we go. A little bit overlap. We'll aim the pipes that way. And then uh, zigzag a little bit here. There we 
go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is create a secondary extractor so that it will extract that water. And of course, we need to see how much water we got, about 9,000. So eventually, we got to find more water, and we just happen to have more water right over here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put a second extractor Resources in there are low. so that we can have enough water to sustain this and to sustain our people in here because this is going to start consuming a lot of water in here. Uh, I need to make sure this isn't doing rare metals. Rare metals, nope. All right. So it's going to go ahead and take these rare metals that are being consumed or produced here and then run them in over here. Now, another thing I need to look at is how much concrete I have. I have a bunch of concrete, a bunch of food, a bunch of metals. Looking good overall. Uh, still need to get the rest of my uh, stuff built down here. So I'm going to go ahead and start prioritizing these. And I'm going to need about this many solar so that I can uh, keep these three going. Right? So that will allow me to run all of this stuff day and night. Uh, all right. Get that going. This is 1.2. Very nice. 6.1. How are we looking? We got 11 polymers. Now I can go a little bit easier. All right. Go a little bit Resources easier. Resources are low. Take that, take that uh, shift out of there, and then I can go ahead and fill up my electronics factory uh, with a shift. Now, the funny thing about the electronics factory is it takes three electronics to fix the electronics factory. So if you run out of electronics and you, your factory goes off, that's it. You have, to, you have to call in some electronics. There's nothing else you can do. Uh, and this also burns electronics too. So you basically need five electronics to keep these two running. So you got to make sure that you are producing a good amount of electronics. Meteor shower incoming. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So let's go ahead and save that right there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save that as uh, Kiz Start. Uh, bam. Uh, and that is looking pretty good right there. We've got all of our stuff going. How's this guy going out there? He's got 36. Resources are low. Sector scanned. Now, this is the type of game that you get started playing, and then you can play it for 21 hours, which is what I did. Which is what I did. Hey, Game Killer, what's up, man? Thanks for hanging out in the chat. Hey, Fenwood, good to see Research you. Research complete. Uh, I would be heading out here in just a moment, everybody. I do got to go pick up my kids uh, here in just a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this off here. And let's see. Did we get all the food out of there? No, we didn't get all the food out of there yet. Because, again, I, I, I took less drones so that I could, of course, have my factories, which will allow me to kind of balance a little bit better. So I kind of utilize this guy to do a lot of the drone stuff uh, that typically I would do. Right? And he goes a thousand times faster than the drones. He just, he just like grabs it all, stacks it up, and then this will be ready to go bye-bye. Just a sec. All right, it's nighttime, or it's daytime, there we go. Hold it, no, no precious metals. Precious metals out of there. No precious metals. All right, it's got, it's got all the resources off of it. It's got enough fuel. It is out of there. Cable fault reported. <coughs> all right, now we're doing on our research. Did we get our, uh, we did. Now we've got our high rise buildings. Uh, and it takes 10 polymers. Uh, of course, that's why I was also making polymers. I've got 15, so I'm good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually make sure that I can... Oh, I know i got to wait for this to finish first. So I'm going to get rid of my current apartments. I'm going to put some high-rise there instead, uh, which is going to make it very efficient. And then I can, of course, bring in more people, uh, which allow me to, of course, uh, uh, have more people for production. Now, again, notice that I've only used one rocket. One resource rocket, and I've already got my uh, stuff balanced out. I've got enough uh, machine parts, 2.7 going, 1.8 polymers going, which is perfect. 
and then uh, data production of 1.6. So I am now at a stable part of the game. I'm in a stable part. I am, I'm pulling resources. I'm pulling metal. And I've also got three factories going, which will allow me to uh, basically repair my stuff and run uh, all of my factories and so forth. So I am actually very, very well balanced right now. Uh, our only problem could be power, but I got 569 backed up. So uh, what you want to do is when it goes straight into nighttime, you want to watch this, right? You want to watch how much power it burns and at what point does the day come back on again, right? And how much stored power do you have left over when the, when the, when the sun comes back up again? Uh, so I like to watch it to see how close I am and do I need to add more uh, storage? Do I add, need to add more uh, charging because the batteries aren't charging uh, high enough uh, in the beginning? Uh, and let's see here. Now my next round of power is going to be uh, the wind. There we go. 352 left over. So we're fine. We're fine. Okay. So again, uh, now that we have a good amount of... Uh, of each resource, uh, we need to see what we need the most, what we need machine uh, machine parts, right? Uh, and to do that, we need engineers. So we need to bring some more engineers in, but of course we need to get this one done here first. Uh, and how are we looking on our scanning? Ah, nothing, nothing I can research. Where's my research guy? Let's get him back to my little charge station. And this guy's done doing what he's doing there. Let's get him over here, too. Get him charging up first. And how are we looking on this guy? He's looking good. Looking good. So I am really, really stable right now. I'm very, very stable in the fact that I can run my factories during the day uh, with no issues. Uh, and at nighttime, I can keep basically everything running uh, at night as well. Now, I can cut off all of the factories during the nighttime. Right, based on what shifts I do, based on a uh, fact I can just sector scan off. anomaly oh, found. There we go. Come on, B. Oh, it's just a, just a research one. Oh well, but I'll take it. Go get it. All right. Again, let's keep looking for that. Oh, it was 80 over here. Wow. Go with that. Uh, let's keep looking for that research. Keep looking for that stuff. Constantly be scanning. Looking good there. Lots and lots of uh, concrete being done there so I can make my second dome here. Eventually, we'll probably do that next time. Uh, and there we go. So we're really fairly balanced. I would like to have more people uh, in here uh, so we can catch up a bit on uh, electronics. Right now, we're producing three, which is good. Uh, and we just need to get this research done so we can call more people in. Now I don't need to make my second dome yet until I have uh, until I have removed that kind of first level housing and then put the second level housing in and then bring in a couple rounds of peeps uh, and then I'll be good. <coughs> I need to get that one done first. Uh, now another thing I can do uh, while I'm at it to kind of speed that research along is I can actually put in a research lab, but it takes eight electronics right I'm like eh, that's a little close to my electronics I don't like to be that close I like to have at least like 10 or at breakthrough least five. discovered oh multi-spiral architecture cool cable fault reported uh, so I like to have at least five electronics or five of each thing as a backup uh, in case something starts to go wrong or a whole bunch of stuff needs maintenance at once uh, I'll go ahead and wait till my uh, stuff is up a bit higher uh, before I do any of that other stuff. All right. And that made it through the nighttime just fine. And we just researched something right here. Residents in basic domes have improved comfort. Awesome. Proper specializations suffer a lower work penalty. Nice, nice. Need that one right there. Need that one. <coughs> All right. Another good time also, uh, since I do have a little bit of machine parts and stuff, is to... Oh, wait, there's one way out there. Oh, you way out here hiding. Oh, don't have enough power. Let's go ahead and bring it back first. A little charging station. Uh, and we need to make another antenna. Maybe right about there. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tell it to make it in uh, a sensor tower. Oh, I need to bring my guy out first. Vehicle battery low. Charge up first then, bro. Got to charge him up. Now what I'm going to do Resources is, are low. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring him way out here. Meteor incoming. Ooh, look out. Bring him way out here. Let's break my stuff. No. All right. So I'm gonna bring him way out here. Research in this complete. I'm gonna get this guy, and I'm gonna need to bring him back. Bring him back. Drop that off there. We're looking on time. A few more minutes. A few more minutes. <clears throat> hey, Don Bab, what's up? Anybody knows if Kismet is planning on if Kismet is planning on play? Playing what? Playing some Sea of Thieves. Well, here's my here's my take on Sea of Thieves. Now, I like the game. I like the gameplay. Uh, I like what they've done with it. But I probably won't play it. And you're like, Kismet, why won't you play it? It's an awesome game. Here's why I won't play it. Other people. Other people suck. <laughs> I, I'm one of those people that uh, I like playing as a group uh, toward a common goal against NPCs and stuff like that. But the fact that people can just gank you the whole entire time while you're playing just totally sucks. I was actually watching some people play, and they just kept getting ganked all the time. They would uh, go in and they'd collect their things and whatever, and then the big, they'd have like a two-person ship, and then four-person ship would come along and just wipe them out. And then they'd go back and they'd try it again, and they'd go in and wipe them out. And then so on and so forth. And they just kept getting ganked again and again and again. And I know that would make me not want to play. So I just watch other people play instead. So I probably won't be playing Sea of Thieves. Though, never say never, right? You never know. But uh, I won't be purchasing it unless somebody gifts it to me, maybe. But uh, that's why I don't play that type of game. Because it encourages that type of behavior. It encourages that type of gameplay. Uh, and I don't like that type of gameplay. I don't like it when uh, some people who are just like... Uh, who are just ruining it for other people, right? I don't like that type of gameplay. At all. Alright, what's the other thing I need here? Yeah. I need electronics. All right, so I'm getting a little bit of everything here. A little bit of metals, a little bit of electronics. And I'm driving my boote way out here. And I want to put a sensor as close as the unexplored sector as I can. I'm thinking right there. Right there. All right. So this guy's going to com come driving all the way up here. And he's going to bring the resources. And this guy is the builder guy. Uh, so I'm going to bring the resources right up here. Up against it. These guys going to grab what resource they need. And there we go. And then, Sector scanned. Anomaly found. There we go. Bringing that guy back. Bringing this guy back. Go ahead and park him right there again. Uh, so there we go. So basically what that did is that gave a boost to all this area. Notice 371 now, sensor boost. Um, that's one of the cool things about playing the Futurist is the fact that you can get that massive sensor boost. All right, let's go see if we can get this out here. Wow, look at all that. Look at all that metal sitting out here. That's a lot of metal. A lot of metal. All right, speaking of metal, this has got plenty of metal, yes. Uh, this has got plenty of uh, raw stuff, yes. All right, nice, nice. You can also offset your work shifts, by the way. Uh, make these people work at nighttime so they have, enough resources, reported. The day, they have enough resources for the daytime. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Come put this stuff back. So I face the final, the final curtain. Yes. 
Uh, all right, let's go ahead and queue up uh, a raid here. We're gonna go show somebody some love, and thanks everybody for hanging out. That wasn't too bad. My voice, uh, my voice hung in there pretty good, I think. Not too bad. <laughs> a bit of coughing, but other than that, pretty good. Oh. Sector scanned. Anomaly found. Oh, another anomaly. Fine. Ooh, couple, couple good stuff. And we'll pick up from where we left off here next time. Uh, I, will, I think I'll be playing this on. Wednesday, Wednesday during the day. Uh, there will be no uh, VR, by the way, while I'm still sick. Uh, so we'll be playing Subnautica instead on, Mon on Tuesday night. Uh, but I'll be back, of course, not tonight, but uh, I'll be back tomorrow uh, at the same time, 12 noon uh, or 9 a.m. E uh, Pacific time. So 12 noon Eastern time uh, during the day. And then, of course, at nighttime, we'll be playing some, some sub Subnautica during the day. We'll be playing Fallout Shelter. You'd be like, Kismet, I sure wish you had a schedule so I know exactly what you're playing when. Guess what? Right no there below the stream. No active research. Right research there below the stream. Research complete. Oh, Anomaly we got research analyzed. complete. Oh, yeah. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Hold on. Let's pause. All right. What I'm going to do is make these people homeless for a second. Hopefully I have enough resources. I do. go and then take that out make this the highest priority thing uh, now what that's gonna do is it basically double up my ability to have twice as many people in that same area then I will re also remove this other one over here uh, and then everybody will move into this one and then I will add that one and then I will try to bring uh, two rounds of peeps in uh, so we have just an absolute massive amount of people to run uh, our uh, area here uh, all right and what else are we doing we're bringing our thing back so it can come back no active research what that should never happen that should never happen all right so let's go ahead and get some of this oh what's this oval dome <gasps> i never seen that before look at that oval dome uh an elongated dome which has space for two spires Oh, that's super cool. I don't have the resources for that, but that's super cool. Uh, let's go ahead and do botanist next. Uh, let's just do all this cheap stuff. Let's do all the cheap stuff. Maybe I should do my drone first, though. No active research. Let's do drone first. Then we'll do the cheap stuff. Higher storage capacity. Mm, that's tempting too. But see, that's way down in the 3000s, right? You want to try to get all of the earlier ones done first uh, so that you can get that uh, achievement done. Uh, and that's what I try to do. Uh, work toward that achievement. All right, all right. All right, all right. My thing's telling me I got to go. All right, hold on. Let's save again. And new save game. Uh, Kids 2. All right, let's go to the main menu so I'm not tempted to keep going. <laughs> uh, all right, there we go. Let's, let's, let's stop getting distracted. I could, I could just literally keep playing that all night long. Uh, let's see. Oops. Oopsie. Where's it at? Down here. <coughs> all right, who do we got? Who do we got? Got some peeps playing. Ha, huh, I like this guy's beard. Ha, huh, that guy looks like Weird Al. All this guy has an epic stash, too, and I like his title. This time I will survive. I like positive thinking. I'm going with that guy. I'm going with that guy. I like the other guys, too. I like the guy who looks like Weird Al. That's pretty awesome. Uh, all right, so we're going to go ahead and get this guy right here. His name is, uh, let's see, Moose Major MC. He's got 1,000 followers, uh, 1,008. Right now he's got about five people in there, and he's playing some Surviving Mars. Uh, he uh, looks like he's doing the same thing as me, uh, trying to survive. He's got a, he's got a pretty epic uh, little setup going there, too. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and raid him. Let's go ahead and jump back into my, uh, into my uh, car here. Boom! All right, let's get let's get ready to go, everybody. Let me get back in my Tesla, 
Uh, we're going to drive to Mars here. I'm going to go ahead and turn that music off. All right, let's go ahead and raid this guy. Let me go ahead and set up the raid here. Now, right over here in the chat, you're going to see it say, uh, Kismet Love Train, Sharon the Love. I want you guys to go ahead and highlight that uh, and get ready to raid with me. Now, I need everybody to come along with me because this is the power that you guys have is to make somebody's day today. Uh, that we may be his first raid. We may be his 57th raid. Uh, either way, we're going to go ahead and show him some love today. And thanks, everybody, for hanging out. I appreciate you guys uh, letting me cough in your ear a little bit. <laughs> I sh should hopefully be back to my normal schedule if I'm still feeling good. Uh, so I should be back, uh, of course, tomorrow uh, afternoon. I'll keep taking lots of cold medicine. I'll keep taking lots of cough medicine to try to not cough in your guys' ears, hopefully kick this cough at some point. This is one of those lingering coughs that go on for months. <coughs> there it is. There it is. It's back. Uh, all right. Let me go ahead and set up this raid right here. Raid. Kablamo! There we go. Now it's popped up right up there in the corner. Now you will be automatically added to the raid normally. Uh, but if you're not added, go ahead and hit that join button up there. And again, come along with us. You can just go ahead and type Kismet, Love Train, Share in the, ra uh, share in the Love. Or you can go ahead and highlight it there, copy it, paste it into his stream as well. Uh, also put in the link uh, for those of you who want to get a head start. But wait for me, though. Wait for me. Don't get, don't get too far ahead. Here we go. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.